<laughs> I'm upset. 50,000 on my head is disrespect. <laughs> I wish we had a camera. She's over there really rocking. Oh. <laughs> hey, we were just discussing how much would be a disrespectful amount for somebody to kill you. <laughs> I mean, some shit is just disrespectful. And I want to know how much it is if I ever get a hit out there. I'm asking before you pop me. <laughs> like, look, nigga. Did he pay you already? Because he might not pay you. <laughs> All I want to know is how much was the offer. <laughs> nigga, did you take the first offer? Was it like, oh, yeah, I could do it for that? <laughs> how much was the highest offer? Did y'all negotiate it? I'm about to say, did you at least haggle, nigga? Did you just take the first thing you threw at you? All right, I'll go take about 500. All right. Listen. I do it for 500. <laughs> if somebody popped me <laughs> over three days worth of pay, <laughs> I'm upset. <laughs> I would be like, cue the song. Then there's somebody in the background. I don't know who the fuck it is. But somebody in the background going to start playing that Drake. I'm oh upset. my god! Five hundred on my head. <laughs> five hundred is disrespectful. I think five hundred is disrespectful. You could make anybody. You could be working at McDonald's. That's a check. I'd be like, it's such your old boozy ass. <laughs> Except this five hundred, I pay you six, so you don't kill my motherfucking ass. And that way, I go find whoever gave you five hundred, you five hundred to pop me, because somebody got to die, <laughs> and it ain't gonna be me, nigga. That's all I gave you. I put another hundred with that. <laughs> I'd be like, so what we gonna do is... And I'll give you a ride to the house. Come on, nigga. Because <laughs> you pulled up on me with a bike? <laughs> and you think you get away with this shit? Nigga took an Uber to your house. See, nigga, you not already spent twenty six ninety nine out of your shit. That's coming out of your money. And the Uber didn't even wait. So you got to call another one. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they usually wait like for contract killings. <laughs> Uber's like, what, is, what are you doing? No. no. <laughs> And I can drop you off here, but I can't drop you off in front of the building. Nigga, we behind a warehouse. I'm not <laughs> waiting. Just get out. I wonder if you ask the Uber driver to take you to a, like a secluded spot like that, would he just keep driving? Like, would he be cool with it? I don't know their stipulations. <laughs> I know what mine would be. No, nigga. No. Like, and I'll, send, I'll send them the message, too, because you know you still got to go through the Uber app. No, nigga. No. I'm not driving down there. Please get out. You know what? I've watched Forensic Files. That is my show. And let me tell you, some people have been, there's been some offers made for a, a knockoff price at around 200 And I'm just thinking, you got to be real heartless or you just need a lot of something. Yeah. Well, a little something. But you need that shit right now. If you offer me $200, like I might, I might kidnap like a hamster, like a hamster or something. <laughs> but I'm not taking nobody life over two hundred. Listen, I kill an ants over two hundred. I'm upset, nigga. I'm upset at the fact that you even thought I would do the shit for that chump change. Not to say that if I had two hundred dollars right now that I would not be happy. Okay, <laughs> I would. But you ain't gonna listen. Two hundred dollars to twenty five to life. Uh no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. Cause I already know I'm gonna fuck up somewhere along the lines. I'm getting caught. I just told you I probably just kidnap a rodent. Like if you came in with two hundred, he says a hamster, you know what I mean? You gotta get it out of that house. I'm not taking little Cody's hamster. Oh, right, give me a picture. <laughs> I'm, I'm not taking little Cody's hamster over no two hundred dollars. I mean looking at the picture of this him. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I'm what time Cody go to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to get that hamster over 200. I can't lie. I'm going to get that shit. Then you're going to get it. Then you definitely going to be in there for breaking the inner. And your bond is 500. You did the shit for two. I'll be like, Ron, let's He's going to leave the key under the mat. I'll be like, Ron, let's just go ahead and do the show. <laughs> they like, you have talked for 15 minutes. I'll be like, don't worry, y'all. <laughs> but. <laughs> you ain't got to get off the phone. <laughs> that hamster kidnapping will probably be. That's just like somebody stealing like. Like one of the big high school football games coming up, and they go get the mascot. Like we, it'd be epic. It'd go viral in these days. It'd bring so many memories back for high school. Which... First of all, a hamster, a hamster, a live no, hamster. No offense, people. I love them too. I actually like guinea pigs, but a hamster is basically a white child pet. 
Okay. No, it's not. Most of them are. Well, all right. I might agree with most. But I bought my little sister hamster way, way back. I'm going to tell you where I fucked up. She was so happy with the hamster that I bought her another one. Mm. And the new one fucked the old one up. I didn't know that, like, hamsters, like, they didn't like each other. Yeah. They, <laughs> there's, well, some can be around each other. Anyway, I'm not about to speak of my animal. <laughs> My animal knowledge, the point is, <laughs> most of the time, they're a white child's pet. Mm-hmm. The rats that's, that's running through the house. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we don't like them anyway. So no, you we know, don't fuck with them. So <laughs> we don't fuck with animal rats or human rats. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can which, agree with that. Which on that, on that topic, I'm going to say, listen to my son's, it's an old one, but his, um. Breakfast Club interview because how he described my son. Yeah, the rapper. Oh my god. Anyway, how I thought you were talking about your son. I'm about to say why you say yo why you say son like nah, that? No, because I thought about saying like that. Like <laughs> oh, that's too clean. That's different. Like my son. I was about to say, dude, you getting way too boozy but for the show I was now. Like then they might think that they might think I'm Asian because that sounds like my son. You know what I mean? And then no, where's my son? <laughs> that's just too much. But no, listen to his his interview, and I've just brought that up really quickly to say <laughs> he gave a great description about snitches it, and, and how we perceive people. It was really, really good. It makes me think totally different. So if you guys have time, make sure you listen to it. Plus, I got to watch this. Is he a snitch? Was, like, no. a, is he a former snitch? No, nah, he did time. He actually he took, he did time. He took the charge. But I had <laughs> But I had, was it his own charge? If ain't nobody around and you ain't snitch, I mean you ain't supposed to. No, he he didn't he didn't <laughs> It wasn't even him, but he took it. So so shout out to him. Wow. However, I had a dream about him too, and I, let me just say, he's he's one of my favorites now. <laughs> anyway, point blank period, listen to that. So that's a wow. But anyway, if you kidnap a hamster, you're doing time. I don't know. You know what? If they don't have like Laws that are written. If it ain't no hamster law, I'm going to beat it. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucker, don't try to write no fucking law that says that you can't take another motherfucker's hamster. Listen. Because I did it. If the white man cares about pit bulls, yeah. you definitely going down for the hamster. You going down. I'll do two weeks tops. <laughs> Listen. That's what you say now. I'll be like, <laughs> like, you have a call, bro. I'll be like, Rod, it's been three weeks. <laughs> What are they talking yeah. about? Yeah, I wouldn't take it. I wouldn't take it. I'd be like, that 200, we already spent that shit, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, fucking... but you came through for it. <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right, I'm going to just, I ain't going to admit. That's disrespectful, I'm gonna do What? If somebody say, I'm going to give you two, I wouldn't even give you $200 and steal a cat. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody be like, hey, take it. You got to give me more than $200. It's, it's more of a threat. <laughs> like, cats, they don't really... Especially you can't you, just run up on them and take them. Especially if you get Church's ass outside. I'm telling <laughs> you, that boy was right outside. <sighs> I'm waiting on that movie. It come out next year. I thought it was this Halloween. What the hell was I? I was about to say something. We started talking about these goddamn hamsters. And cats. I, I had a good topic. It wasn't. It wasn't scripted. <laughs> See, do hamsters have retractable claws? That's why you charge at least six, seven hundred for a cat. <laughs> You got to. That's the cat to claw. <laughs> you asked a question. <laughs> What's his name? Okay, cuddles, cuddles, cuddles. All right. Does he come when you call? No. All right, let me get a picture. <laughs> you always, the only time it's real, you got to ask for a picture. you never seen a movie with a hitman and they ask for a picture. Cuddles in it. <laughs> <laughs> Like you wanted to open gas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I got you. We are. I'm not dealing with it anyway. Not too bad. <laughs> I cannot deal. I cannot deal. Oh shit! But yeah, th- listen. I'm upset. If somebody, <laughs> this is disrespectful. The amount of money that people are accepting nowadays is just unacceptable. That's all I have to say. But give me a cool number to take a motherfucker out. <laughs> now, mm-hmm. who? Okay, because there's questions. There's questions that come along with this. Mm-hmm. 
the per- not that we would ever do this to anyone. No, who's listening. no, absolutely not. But it, well, but, it depends. <laughs> but speaking. <laughs> Hypothetically speaking. It depends. Motherfucker do a podcast on this block. Somebody got to go. <laughs> I right, hold on. Are they down in the corner? I don't like that shit. <laughs> I don't like that at I all. I don't like that shit at all. <laughs> I'd be like, Ron, put the banana down. <laughs> we'll go talk to him. <laughs> no, nah, we're going to have to drop it down when these niggas fuck talking to him. <laughs> that's what another one. You have a go, bro. I'd be like, Ron, you keep getting locked up. <laughs> hey, man, there's some dude got a podcast down. He, want, he outside, he want to talk to you. Shit. Are you out front? <laughs> <laughs> that was the funniest shit ever. Hey, you know what? Before we go off, and we went and took a topic, went off it, off it, off it. You can't tell me it wasn't the funniest moment ever when dude came in, met the man was outside. He said he wanted to beat y'all. <laughs> that nigga, I still call him Kane. And the way he looked, he was like, he out front. Then he kind of tilted the wig. Like, bro, that shit was hilarious. <laughs> That's the funniest fucking part ever. That was the pimp shit. He's just going to be known as Kane. <laughs> Mm-mm. Oh, anyway, guys. Okay, hello. <laughs> yeah, hey. Uh, in case y'all didn't know, I'm OG Ron. This is Bianca Brown, and we are the host of Urban Absurdity. Y'all probably know that. <laughs> who, 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 who are we again? <laughs> who the fuck is these niggas? Okay, that's who we are. And I'm kind of sad because I didn't win the 1.6 billion dollar lottery. I've been kind of recovering from it for. What, three, four days? Mm. It hurts. It really does fucking hurt. Because somebody, and I'm going to get to my theory in a minute. Somebody actually bought a ticket that was worth a billion dollars. Congratulations. (sighs) Congratulations. You don't know how fucking arrogant I would be right now. I would be like right now before I even get. I ain't even got the check yet. I'm borrowing money. I'm going to. I went to four different banks with the ticket. Like, I, just give me a million. I'll pay you back. <laughs> you know it's coming. Yeah, they know it's coming. They but, be like, but we don't know it's coming to us. <laughs> <laughs> right? You right? <laughs> you right about that? <laughs> you right? <laughs> Man, it's okay. I don't. I don't even know what to say. We talked about it on the last show, but who the fuck looks at a ticket? How do you react to something like that? Well, if you keep playing, you may know. I played Powerball tonight, seven hundred twenty million. I fucking lost, and I had memorized my numbers because I looked at them. I bought the ticket earlier, so when I went online and looked at them, I didn't even go check the ticket. I already knew like these are none of my numbers. You want to know what? I want to know. I I haven't looked it up. I haven't gone that deep into it. But I wonder if people are winning with quick picks or if they're winning by numbers that they just have themselves like what is the uh, what are the odds of or not the odds but just the the difference of people who won by picking their own numbers or people who won by just doing quick picks because that's important to know yeah i researched that a while back a lot of people actually it's some weird ways that they win like some people say fortune cookie numbers i have heard a lot of people say they pick their own numbers like birthdays and their family and stuff like that but one thing I got to say about the quick pick tickets, and I kind of think that I'll like at least have one number of my own, is because I'm really OCD about numbers. So when they give me, uh, like say I go and get five quick picks like I did today. So you got five numbers, you can see them all there right there on one ticket. And when you do the quick pick, it's like the numbers are so... It's only a slight difference in them. Like, uh, say, for, uh, for instance, the Mega Millions. I bought 10 of those. I had the same Powerball like four times. Mm. So it's like when they do the quick pick, it's like it's not that random. It's like, dude, these numbers look the same. Like, motherfucker, you just decreased my chance of winning. So I think it might be a good idea to at least do a couple of your own numbers. I think I would like to know specifically what are the – and there has to be an answer to this. Mm. I would like to know – if pe- more people win by picking their own numbers or by quick picking. Yeah. Because I need to know, mm-hmm. am I doing this wrong? Because I do the same thing. Like, I'll give some numbers and then I'll do some quick picks. Mm-hmm. But if I'm wasting my time with these quick picks, mm-hmm. if people are really saying, like, I won and I picked my numbers, like, I did. Because regardless whether you pick your numbers or not, you don't know what numbers it's going to pick. Mm-hmm. 
but do you, more people win by just picking their own numbers? So that'll stop you from that to save you a little bit of cash. Like, why am I asking you for for help, machine? <laughs> exactly. Pay. I got a lot of money on the line right now. I just spent twelve dollars. Goddamn it! I don't get paid till next week. And then shit, do I really trust this BP or this Quick Trip or this hole in the wall that somebody just got shot at last week? Do I trust <laughs> this place? Should I trust my own self? Yeah. And just do my own numbers, things that make you go, hmm. I mean, one thing I can say is tonight. I said I was almost done with quick picks, but mm-hmm. now I, I'll still get them because the number when it came out, it was like I will get a ticket and say if it's like I used to have this thing about my numbers being too close together. Like I got, say, a 2, a 16, a 19, a 21 or something like that. I was like, no, nah, that ain't going to hit. But the winner tonight, it was like it was three numbers that were like 13, 17, 18. So I was like, okay, it can't happen. So. I just you gotta uh, just be super fucking lucky, which yeah. I'm not. <laughs> we just gotta go for what we know. That's all. That's all. We can do it. Hopefully, I can do it because I'm gonna keep playing. Because one of the things I used to say about people, like we only play the lottery when it's like five, six hundred thousand billion, but we never fucking just go. On, it starts at forty million. Yeah. So it's like the brokest motherfucker, like my ass, be like, nah. I'm going to let it go a little high. <laughs> like, I can't just use a quick 40. But then again, too, like, <laughs> what, are, what are the odds of that? How many people win when it's just at the beginning or at the, at its lowest? Like, how many people? Because they say all of this stuff is just math. Like, mm-hmm. people who, who are good at math normally do better at, maybe not get it, all of it, but normally do better just because of how the system is and how things are set up. Mm-hmm. Like, do you win by quick picks? Do you win by picking your own mm-hmm. number? Is it, do you have more chances of winning when it's lower versus when it's higher? Mm-hmm. Should I play right now? Or should it, or would it be set up to where they wanted to keep, because they make money off this too. Mm-hmm. It's not like, you know, they make nothing. Mm-hmm. Of course, the higher it is, the more money that, that the organization makes. So mm-hmm. is it beneficial for, for them to go ahead and keep it going? Mm-hmm. Or could or- it, could it be at 50 million and I'd be like, okay, let me snatch that. Man, now I'm leaning. I don't know if it's just the bitterness, the saltiness about me not winning. But I just sat and thought about it. It's like, okay, $1.6 billion. And this is the first time, like right before the drawing, that the amount didn't go up. If you watch the lottery, it was $1.6 billion last week when they told us, okay, all right, no winner. The estimated jackpot, $1.6 billion. Now, they probably sold another billion tickets because everybody had lottery fever. Usually right before that drawing, it jumps up. It didn't move. And when I read what the actual, if it was a single ticket so which it was, <clears throat> mm. you would get, like, first of all, the actual lottery, the company, they took $700 million. Seven hundred million. Like that's before you pay your state and federal taxes in whatever state you live. So it was like after that, you would end up with like five hundred and thirty five million. So I'm like, okay, that's one point one billion fucking dollars that they took out of it. And where does that money go? Like they say lotteries are uh it was something that was written, okay, in order for you to do this in this state, you like uh shit a yearly percentage has to go to public schools and shit like that. Mm-hmm. But Who's to say that there was really a winner? But lies, because there's loopholes into that, too, on how uh-huh. it goes to these schools. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they're mm-hmm. going to, either way, point blank period, they're going to get their, their share. Mm-hmm. Now, it's just like regular taxes. Mm-hmm. You're going to get your share. However, <laughs> would I give a fuck that you took the share? No. because it's, Hell no. Nah. Because it's, but would I like it all? Yes. Of course. Yes, I would. <laughs> would I question, like, where the money going anyway? Yes, because I should have got that. But. <laughs> yeah, I need all mine, brother. <laughs> but would I still be happy with what I got? Of course. Of course. I'm, uh, I'm not upset. Ron's upset. I'm upset. Ron's talking about it. I'm not upset. You want to know why? Because <laughs> it's kind of like having a, a Porsche. I don't. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> Damn. So I didn't think we were going there with it. I don't. So I I can't miss what I don't have. I can't miss riding in that car mm-hmm. with the top down. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. Should I ain't never had? I one. never had that. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> oh, we should try this. <laughs> it's cool. Like no, I've I've never. So. And would I like to be there? Yes. But does it upset me that somebody else won? Because I looked at my mom. She was like, I said, are you disappointed? She was like, yeah. And I'm like, well, of course you would be disappointed because everyone wants to win. You really, really want to win. Mm. But my odds, I don't have high hopes on winning. You know what I mean? I, don't, I do. I don't, I don't know why. I don't have high hopes on like, I just got to. And if I don't like tomorrow's going to be bad. No, I'm going to do the same shit that I would have did. Anyway. <laughs> I'm one of those people who, like, for some reason, when I think about something for so long, yeah, when I didn't hit, I was upset. I'm, as soon as I see my numbers and they didn't hit, I'm like, okay, please don't have a winner. Roll this shit over. Next week is my week. Or three days from now, I will be winning this shit. But one thing that's good about it, and I have to say this, is uh, I got to say this. I, I'm a dreamer, first of all. I'm always talking about the things I want to do, and a lot of people aren't like that, but Lottery Fever brings it out of a lot of people don't like you don't all right i'm talking about random people you can meet a person in the in the grocery store when the fucking lottery is a billion dollars y'all might not even talk like you can walk into like i walked in a quick trip and the motherfucker hey you buying any tickets oh man what i would do with that billion dollars now people opening up to you man i would do this i would do man usually anybody talking about their fucking dreams and passing well i would <laughs> I mean, I no, I wouldn't. I mean, I would tell it to people I know. But well, I, of course, them. Talking but about, hey, I'm talking about just random people. Talking about, hey, buddy. <laughs> um, guess what I would do if I had money? They'd be like, I don't give a fuck. I don't even know you. Get the fuck away from me with that bullshit. This motherfucker trying to rob. Me. Are you drunk? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I liked about it, though. It's like everybody, <laughs> like everybody I worked with, even people that you ain't cool with. It was just an icebreaker. I guess that was. Like, there are many icebreakers that people like. That's why we just walk past people and keep on looking at our phone. That lottery shit was an icebreaker. Everybody, well, most people, I, some people don't care about the fucking lottery, but everybody had a reason to talk to each other. Because you, Now we're back to normal. Now, uh, well, and then you got to look at it like this. Things are super tense right now. Things are super tense. You have to, some, some conversation that you have could turn into something else. But yeah. you know what people aren't going to argue about? Money. Oh, we sure ain't. And and money is one of those topics that you can talk about that shit with anybody from a kid to a, a older person. Exactly. And and it's neutral for everybody. It's like, yeah, it's something that we all want. Mm-hmm. Do we all want um, equal rights? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we all seem to not be on the same page with that one. Some people do, but those are the ones who don't have it. But we're not, <laughs> we're not all on the same page, and that's what I say every time you talk about money. You talk about money... And about wanting money, you can even talk about money to somebody who already got money, and they'll talk about how they want more money. Like, because if they didn't want more money, they wouldn't watch their investments. Of course, exactly. You, of course, you want more money. So those are that's a topic that you can have with anybody, and you'll be on the same page about it. Even if someone said, "Well, I don't care to have all that much money. I just want to be, I just want to be well off." I mean, okay, you still want money. Mm-hmm. You just don't want that much, but you still want something, which means we still have something in common. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. That, that's I why. hate those people. That's why. It's not wrong. I mean, it's not right, but I don't like those people. <laughs> what? I was praying. You know what? Whoever won it, if there's a real winner, because I think they fucking bamboozled us. Of course, it was in a fucking state where you don't have to come out and say anything, which is convenient. Because there are many states that like allow anonymity. Gotta love that. So, that money probably just... All right, anyway, off of that. <laughs> I just wanted that ticket. I'm, you know what? We off of it. Yes. We are. I'm so fucking poor, y'all. If y'all could <laughs> find it in y'all heart to just donate to the show, we would very much appreciate it. We we really like right now. We're like in a cardboard box recording with a makeshift ceiling fan. And if anyone can start a GoFundMe <laughs> and give us the money. <laughs> <laughs> Today. Yeah, I'm going to set it up after the show. Or tomorrow morning, you know, no rush. <laughs> no rush. <laughs> All right. 
What are we on now? I just wrapped up a conspiracy theory. I don't think there was an actual lotto winner. I think that if anybody comes forward, he works for the lottery, and they just wanted to put a face with it. I think they bamboozled us. All right, on to the next one. And this is something that I kind of think was fake. Like, this had a lot of people uh, talking about it with the bombings. Mm. And, like, I don't know. It just seems like the timing was just weird. Like, you got uh, voting coming up really soon. Then all of a sudden, this uh, Trump fanatic, he's not a fan. That's when you say the whole thing. An alleged Trump fanatic was driving around in a Scooby Doo van, but instead of Scooby Doo, it was Donald Doo all over the van. This fool, <laughs> this fool's in the mystery machine. <laughs> I mean, it just seems kind of weird to me. It's like, okay, all right, you're gonna send fourteen bombs off. Uh, through the mail, and the posters had to kill him. I mean, goddamn. Is that the package lately? All right, anyway. Sent the package to the Obamas. Sent the package to the Clintons. And it was downhill from there. I want Robert De Niro, too. I want, man. Is it because Robert De Niro is married to a black woman? <laughs> yeah, and he has publicly denounced Trump. But some just seem like off. Like, way off with it. It's like, I don't know if it was just the timing. I don't know if it's how fast they found. I mean, who the fuck? I know the FBI is good at what they do, but who the hell looks at shit, a couple of pieces of pipe, a fucking stopwatch, and a fucking, you know, a little set of wires and be like, okay, all right, we know who did it. Let's go get his ass. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I don't know. How, how you feel about it? I can't even get it out. I just think it was fake. I just think it was staged. So you don't think someone was really? I don't think nobody was that mad at 14 people. I don't know. They starting to act up. I mean, but if you do your research too, because like people like the Unabomber have laid the blueprint for uh, bombers. (laughs) And sending something through the mail to... um, Two ex, two ex presidents. It's like they still have secret service. They're not gonna open a package. It's like either he was that stupid and didn't like really think it out. Which there are people out here like that. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the whole mental health thing when they found him, he had to be somebody who had mental issues and all. The whole background was already known. And then it's like TMZ breaks the story. He was an ex-Chippendales dancer. It just like seems weird to me. I don't know. So you think it was either staged or somebody set him up to make it look, say it was it was him? And it was it could have been somebody else? Yeah, because there was a debate on whether the bombs were even real. Like, was it just some hoax? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm like, 14 bombs. All right, this is where I start thinking with the 14 bombs. Okay, was it a timer on it? Like, did you give it like a day and a half to get to the residence then it'll blow up? Or was like... Well, most bombs come with timers. Yeah, but how do you send them? Like, these motherfuckers was in packages, stamps. They went through the post office. You know how to, you know how rough the post office handle your shit when it's going through processing? Well, some of them have triggers on them. So if you, not that I know about this. <laughs> it sounds like you do. <laughs> so if I, let's say if I wanted to put a... a pipe bomb and something right mm. and sometimes if there's like no trigger on it if you shake it too much mm. it's known to go off but if there's a trigger like if i pull a like if you pull a, st- a stem on like if you tape a stem on the box flap or something right mm-hmm. and when you pull it open and it pulls to it's set to go off you know what i yeah. mean like different like different people do bombs totally different ways and thanks to the internet now it's not like 1980 when they was just putting pipe bombs together and putting nails in them bitches like you have access to everything that's telling you how to do something crazy or you right. and we can't fathom that because it's something that we wouldn't do but just because it's something that we wouldn't do doesn't mean that it's not something that other people don't sit and think about and try to do it and uh-huh. they may not do it to the best of their ability mm-hmm. but in their mental they're thinking shit yeah i'm doing this right <laughs> i'm about to fuck their ass but up it's today just, yeah 
it's like when people kill somebody and then you hear about it on the news, you be like, that's just fucking stupid. Yeah. Now, when they did the shit in their head, they wasn't like, this shit gonna be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they was like, shit. Why am I even doing this dumb ass shit? <laughs> like, seriously, they just thinking like, no, this is what I'm gonna do when I put this together and this together and this, you know. So, so crazy stuff happens. Now, could it be a hoax or could it be... Yeah, that is quite possible. I think it was a hoax. I don't put it past... I don't, I don't put it past Trump. What I fucking can't understand is how um, how anybody could go along with it. Like, you didn't think that... Like, in my opinion, I think that the government thinks we're dumb. All right, one thing that I got to bring up to them. I saw a picture. They had a picture of one of the bombs. In the picture with the bomb is the envelope. So I'm thinking, okay. You mean to tell me that you didn't like uh like intentionally set the bomb off knowing what it was? You took it out of the package like the envelope was still there in perfect shape. <laughs> it's like, uh So you just told me that they're triggers and like you, you can open it up, pull it out, and all of a sudden a string, maybe, you know, some elaborate way for the bomb to explode. Yeah. How the fuck did y'all get it out of the package to take that nice, tidy picture of it? I don't know, maybe I think too fucking much. I think this was wrong with me, but I'm like, okay, envelopes in perfect condition. They just open the motherfucker up and here it is, y'all. Well, Here's the bomb. Like, well, I guess it was kind of like the at- anthrax when they were sending it everywhere. Yeah. It's crazy shit. That is just crazy. Like, see, and that's what I mean. Like, who's thinking of this? Who's thinking, let me send some powder out? <laughs> hmm. Just came from Home Depot. <laughs> like, who's who's thinking to do these things? But some people do think daily about doing these things. Yeah. But could it be a hoax? Yes. Could mm. it be somebody who's really like just crazy and just doing this shit just see how far they can get? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they can use the mental health shit. And that's... A, okay, so we as black people, we say shit like um, white people always want to use the mental health. And white people always want to use the mental health. Mm. You know what? If you think your motherfucking ass may have some issues, <laughs> go see somebody. Get a record of that shit. Yeah. Because one thing about white people, though, that when they look in their past, they do have some type of documentation to say, we could, we might have thought this motherfucker was mental. Yeah. Black people, we don't do that. We don't go see nobody. We just be like, shit, ain't nothing wrong. You know something wrong with Uncle Junior. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't took him to see nobody. So if he, don't, if he do something crazy, you be like, shit, we told you niggas he was. Yeah, we told you to stay away from him. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody helped him. We told you to stay the fuck away from him several times. You still chose to walk your ass in there. And you, and you still want to talk to him. <laughs> so, you know, these these are things that, because they use that from high school on up. They use that. They parents will put them in, in, in the shit in middle school, elementary school. Mm-hmm. And we'll be like, oh, ain't no wrong with that child. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. And if you feel like, well, this person could possibly do something crazy, I don't want that to happen, but. If it does, you know, mm-hmm. I want them to know that something is going on here. We just want to check and see. And I think we get nervous, too, because we think they're automatically going to deem us as crazy or something's wrong with us. Or, But it could just be that, shit, we need to talk to somebody. You could just need to talk to somebody. Yeah, did you see the picture of them? That's another thing. I just think sometimes when they come up with these things, I do think they come up with crazy scenarios just to kind of sway votes and, and whatever the hell may be in hand. Perfect time, midterms. This motherfucker looked crazy. There's no way, like, if you walked in uh, into a hospital, wherever the fuck they go to get diagnosed or uh, checked out, see if they got any mental health issues. It's like, that would be like, yeah, I don't even have to ask you any questions. This motherfucker's crazy. Like, another thing, I don't think that they thoroughly researched the person that they appointed to be the uh, suspect. Because it seems kind of weird all of a sudden this motherfucker was a Chippendales dancer and <laughs> stories are coming out that he uh, was angry at other strippers or whatever the fuck. And he like prom- he vowed vengeance against him. He was going to infect them all with HIV. Like, motherfucker, do you even have HIV? It's like, just weird. It's 
listen, I'm telling you, <laughs> we are in a time. Look at no offense, no major offense. Fuck it. Look at Trump <laughs> supporters. Look at them. Yeah. Really? Come on. Like this to me, this isn't. This isn't where you would, and this is the problem again with rational thinking. We think rationally. We think like I couldn't see nobody doing that. Yeah. Yes, the times have shown us. The times have fucking shown us yeah. that, that there are Looney Tunes mm-hmm. like that's outside of the TV. These bitches are real. Mm-hmm. Like they are walking amongst us. They are everywhere. Mm-hmm. These people are fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. And do they think that they're going to get away with certain shit? Yes, they do. Mm-hmm. And then they feel like she a Trump supporter. Look how look when that one dude went to jail and Trump tried to get him out. Mm-hmm. Uh uh, these people, <laughs> these people really think that that Trump has their back. These people really think like he's going to help me, and he's out here to. No, he's not. You ain't even on on the bracket on the tax bracket for that. Yeah. Like, get, oh gosh. In my opinion, on Trump supporters, and we won't go too long in this because just saying the word Trump over and over just kind of fucking we have, pisses me off. We have time for you to do. <laughs> I think it's a lot of fake Trump supporters. It's one of those things to where. They were so ready for the backlash and how they knew we would feel about it. It's like, because I'm on the internet a lot. Websites, like everything, social media to news websites. And I see people, like even Latinos, like you'll see uh, Trump 2020 and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, for what? Trump like once, if he saw you, he would probably kick you out of the fucking country. And then a lot of these white people, which I love y'all, don't get me wrong. Well, most of y'all, not the people who hate us. They are losing a lot of money behind him. See, if you follow the stock market, a lot of these stocks that were lucrative before have started to fall once Trump started placing all of these fucking tariffs and taxes and everything on these other countries. I work with a guy. And, like, I was watching the stock. My scary ass was scared to get into it. I mean, literally, the motherfucker was showing me every day how much money he was making. Even though he bought, like, shit, he bought in at, like, 600 shares on one stock at, like, $5 a piece. So every day, he was like, look at it, Ron. It's like, God damn, five, six hundred $600 he made today. Like, fuck. But they are a Canadian-based company. Recently, Trump slapped their ass with them taxes. Now he just kind of walks by me. <laughs> you just say, you ain't got nothing to show me today? You ain't got nothing to show me. And I'm like, okay. Not just from a financial aspect of it, but I just think most of the Trump support. It's kind of like those things when you have a rebellious team. <laughs> And they bring to you, like, say, I say your son is rebelling at the age of 17, 18. And he's bring home, he brings home a girl that you kind of, I mean, I kind of sort of know the type of person you are. I don't think you would hate a certain type of person. But it's like some kids. When it comes to my baby. <laughs> it's like some kids feel, okay, I'll bring this uh, type of person around that I know he or she doesn't like. And a parent will kind of go in the mode of, like, accepting them, you know what I mean, to counteract <laughs> what he's trying to do. I've seen it before a lot. It's like, oh, you embrace him, and it's like, well, okay, they don't really give a f-. Even though it's fake, they don't know it. Yeah. You don't have I to think deal with it. Yeah, nobody likes fucking Trump. They're just doing that shit to upset the people who really fucking hate him. I think there are some people who really don't like him. I do. Mm-hmm. I think that there's people who, who, like you said, are doing that shit for attention, doing that shit to fit in. I, I think so. Mm-hmm. But I also think that there are people who really like him. I think there are people who feel like a, a lot of people who, who don't really understand what's going on, or even some that do feel like this is a man that has made money. Mm-hmm. And again, here we are money. Mm-hmm. Money makes people think, oh, this could happen for me too. This could be me. Mm-hmm. And you got this person saying, we're not going to stand for this, 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 this tough love. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. And just the fact of you say, I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. You you have no, no like backing. You have no nothing. Like you just came up here and just took over some shit. And people, people like that shit. Mm-hmm. People love it. Mm-hmm. People are like, he just, he got in there. He said he was going to do it. He did it and did it. 
And they, and they falling for that shit. They are falling for that I shit. I have no idea what he promised that he's actually delivered on. Like, whatever he promised they asked and they got their eyes wide and was like, okay, I'm voting for him. A lot of them are really, I think they're making up shit. Oh, well, he does do a lot of things. But when you ask him that question, they give you the Kanye on Jimmy Kimmel, like, like crickets. Like, okay, why do you really like this person? Nobody, I've, I have, I've yet to see one person who actually gave an articulate answer on what he's done, what they believed in about him, and he's delivered on. It's just like, uh. and and one thing, like I said, I think it was the last episode. The only reason some people actually like Trump before is because you said the money and the weird crazy fucking attitude that go along with it. Because you look at most billionaires, they're straight. Like take Bill Gates. You don't see Bill Gates acting a fool. You don't see Bill Gates chasing hoes. I saw Bill Gates. I watched a Bill Gates interview with Ellen. He was on there, I think, maybe five minutes. But it was the driest fucking five minutes ever because he's just a fucking genius. Like, he doesn't. She was, and You know, Ellen is funny. I like Ellen. Yeah. She's funny as fuck. It was like. One of the smartest men in the world, the jokes were like going way over his head. That's not where he excels. It's like, okay. But and then you got this billionaire who's fucking crazy as fuck. You say, hey, bro, I got some bitches. And this nigga fucking pulled a plane up. It, I think that was the only element. Like, it wasn't his actual um, take on the world and take on. Nobody got that deep with him because nobody cared. But now as a president, there's no fucking way that you can see this man fit to run a country. No fucking way. I, I think there are, like I said, there's people who don't. I I think what's so hard for us as human beings is, is to understand that people do not act like you. People do not think like you. Although it may be crazy and stupid to us, it's absolutely dumb. Mm-hmm. There are people who will argue you up and down <laughs> about why they support this people, this person. And I know for a fact because someone put me in this stupid ass group, this Donald Trump group on Facebook. Because they invited everybody in there. And these people are like, I guess it's supposed to. First, it was like a we support Donald Trump. Like, ah, everybody's for him. And then everybody just got in this group and just start dissing his ass. <laughs> yeah. So people get into it all the time. And it was like the takeover. They like, no, we ain't going to have this. And they called it the takeover. And they do. They go in there and piss Donald Trump supporters off all the time. Yeah. But these people will really argue you up and down on mm-hmm. why they support him, why they, they feel like he's the best person for the job. Uh-huh. Like everything. They'll argue with you about it. But I feel like it needed to happen. Something needs to open up our eyes to understand this is real. This shit is it. This is it. Yeah, I definitely think he's done that because most of the arguments I hear from Trump supporters is like they never give you a direct answer. You ask the question of like, well, Obama was the yeah. like, look, <laughs> First of all, at least uh, work on your uh, responses. At least practice something. Give me something. It's deflect. Yeah. That's what people do. People the do art like, of deflection, but, they've mastered it. But anytime you say <laughs> something about somebody, you got to bring somebody else into it. Or if you say something about a woman and you got to bring in a man or you talk about a man, you got to bring in a woman. You have no argument. There's nothing. Exactly. Like now, if you come with other shit and then say that, then it's like, oh, yeah, okay. But if that's the only thing that you're saying, no. Nah. <laughs> I agree. And to float off of that shit and go in, let's talk about one of your favorite holidays. Halloween is coming up. And the reason I bring that up is a lot of people, I feel bad too. A lot of people, will, at least locally I've been looking, a lot of people are going out tonight celebrating the holiday. Costumes and everything. Do you ever dress up? Not anymore. How long has it been? years i've never just <laughs> really? uh no nah, as a like single digits yeah i thought i was too cool at like uh nine or ten for some reason oh that's sad i, I have no it's not sad it's oh, not okay. fucking sad kind of why would you just throw that on me like that? my bad <laughs> no you're great <laughs> damn no you're great <laughs> no i have no idea why i have no idea why i just thought i was the coolest <laughs> 10 year old ever and I couldn't wear costumes no more like for some fucking reason I think it's a <laughs> it's, it's the part of man well I mean I, I stopped doing everything later 
<laughs> like I'm I'm serious. Like I was I was playing Barbies at 17. Well. Real shit. I let it be, and people be like, why wouldn't shit? I tell you niggas, I still got my stuff. And I said if I had a girl, she can't play with my stuff. Like she had to get all, all new shit because those are mommies. Do you still have them? Yes, those are classics. <laughs> I have the ones that were just to be played with and the ones that are still in boxes. Wow. I have yeah, but I because I, I liked it. My imagination was just boom, 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 boom. Because right after I stopped, um, right after I stopped playing Barbies, I started writing another imagination. Like uh-huh. it, it, that's what took me out of playing with that because I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, I can make up stories in my head and I could do this and come up with different ideas and different scenes and different. Mm-hmm. So imagination is everything, which is probably one reason why I really love Halloween is because it puts you in a whole, not the demonic stuff, but just. It puts you in Devil's a... Devil's night. You know, like, it puts you in a whole different... It just, it does. It gives you a whole different feel. It gives yeah. you the feel mm. of, like, anything can happen. It's spooky. It's yeah. good. I can dress <laughs> up, and I can hang out with people, and I could... It's it's just, I don't know. It makes me happy. <laughs> it makes me happy. Yeah, I like it. Like I said, years ago, maybe four or five years ago, like, that was probably the last time I went out on Halloween. I didn't dress up. Like, I bummed the whole... It was like uh, the person I was hanging out with uh, at the time. I think we went out like maybe six of us. Everybody had on a costume with me. I was the one that was just... And I had one bought for me. <laughs> it was Batman. I'm like... Oh. No, give me. Hey, you know, if I was to dress up, yeah, it would be one of the prison question. suits with the stripes. Oh God, okay. I would bring that old shit back. Oh. Like, so our next show, <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, just give me the numbers across the chest, the black and white stripes. Oh God, it's loose. There's nothing tight. I don't want to like well, slide on any Batman that. tights. Yeah, you, a you Batman don't... uniform, a Batman outfit. No, I wasn't about to say that. I was about to say you don't have to wear anything tight, but you can yeah. come up with something. Um, a little more like what's your favorite show? Oh wow, that's a good one. I don't know. <laughs> like you know what, Halloween has changed because people are actually dressing up as before. It was just like superheroes, shit like that. You know yeah. what I mean? People are really being creative and and dressing up as stuff that is like popular now or was popular or something. Yeah, like you you're taking it to a whole nother level, dressing up as celebrities. And I agree with as, that. So it gives you more of a, you don't have to just go with the norm. Mm -hmm. You can like come up with anything and and dress up as that person. All right. I agree with that. I saw like, uh, usually I share pictures, you know, uh, social media goes crazy with the costumes. A friend of mine, I think this was uh, two years ago. He dressed up as a Prince of King from from Coming to America. Mm -hmm. He pulled it off. The outfit was almost exactly like the one from the movie, but. Like he's like super light skinned, so I'm like, bro. <laughs> but but you. Know, but it was still good. Yeah, you know who he is, and that's the yeah. thing. As long as you know who who, even if you don't, because some costumes I had to think about, it, and I'm like, oh, I get it now. But the funnest Halloween party that I've been to was in Power and Light, and that was like when Power and Light was still kind of new. Oh man, when I tell you people like <laughs> dress the fuck up, yeah. Like, they went out. Like, they went out. They had to spend a lot of money. And I'm mm. like, damn. Like, this shit's crazy. <laughs> it was it was fun. The be- And we've talked about this on the show. I'm gonna, like, I only used 30 seconds on this. The best Halloween costume I've ever seen in my life was three or four years ago. I was at a bar, Halloween. Everybody was dressed up. This motherfucker came in. He was dressed as hell, boy. I don't know if he was just, oh. like, stupid big under there or if he just, like, had on pads but it looked like the real character from the movie. It looked like he fucking really like hired a Hollywood makeup crew to hook him up. He had the big ass fist and everything was real about it. He had a fucking coat on the like the brown trench coat. Like, bro, this dude had to spend like a couple thousand dollars on this shit. It's pretty good. But it, yeah, it was pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> I, I would have had to see that. It was pretty darn cool, and they were singing karaoke, so he got up there and, like, really killed it. It was, like, everybody, like, people wanted his autograph. This motherfucker was a celebrity for a night, even though nobody knew who it was. I mean, who the hell it was when he took the shit off. But said, who that nigga? <laughs> Let me try to think. The, the coolest costume that I've seen were, 
I can't think of the coolest, but I can think of one of the best that I've seen. It was, um, <laughs> they were dressed up as, you know, the, damn, we just got finished talking about hamsters. I think they were the, ha- <laughs> they were the hamsters and they were dancing in that. Oh, it was for that car commercial. Oh, uh, like, okay. rockers in the house tonight. And it was like <laughs> three of them motherfuckers. And then they just, <laughs> they jumped down, they started dancing and they, and they had on the, um, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, had the little hoodies on. Okay, so when, <laughs> so they were big. Like, they had to be... It was all three of them. <laughs> and they had to... Something was in there. It was, like, stuffed. Because they were big. Because when yeah. I took a picture with them, they were, like, up here. And they played the song. And they started dancing. <laughs> like, they was dancing to, like, the shit that they was doing. I'm like, oh, you know, I'm too fucked up. But this is crazy. It sounds pretty cool, actually. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it was like, dude had on that chain. <laughs> that thick ass chain that Red had on. Did they bring the car in? Because the car is actually kind of no, small. You kind of. They didn't have a car. They didn't have I'm about to say, you could have kind of drove through the door in that moment. Like. <laughs> they, they, they big ass wasn't getting out. They probably parked it out front and just came, <laughs> just came inside. I said, that shit dope as hell. But yeah, Halloween is just one of those things. It's just a feel good moment. Like, I don't like when, I didn't like when Halloween became, and y'all probably get mad at me, but I didn't like when Halloween became like, not a, just an adult party, but. When it became, I I used to see people get dressed up more for themselves than them, their kids. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like ah, oh, they having a whole costume party at the club, and I'm about to go. And then you would see all their elaborate outfits and how many they got. And then you see their kids, and you like, but bitch, you was just like dressed to the T. Like, you know what? I'm making a post about that later. I thought about that too. I've been going in on certain people. Well, a lot of females. Men don't really do it. Please don't, please don't say I'm sexist, but I do, I do say this. Being naked is not a Halloween costume. Coming out in your best lingerie is not a fucking Halloween costume. I'm a sexy woman. Uh, that's creative. But that's because, that's because these Halloween costumes would not be that exciting or enticing. Or if, if there was no, if there were other people to say the same thing that you're saying. And they're not going to say that. That's because, well, maybe it's because I don't care anymore. I'm not going to clubs to find chicks. I'm like, oh, shit, that's a dope-ass costume. I mean, but even if I was looking at it from the. You said, but when I was. <laughs> yeah, but when I was, what it do? That was. Sh- Yo, shit, dope. I don't know. I, I don't like. I, I really did not have start having fun with holidays. And I read this post. Somebody posted that and was like. You don't get as, as excited about holidays as you do when you have kids. And I didn't think about that. And, of course, I didn't have mine until I was 30. And I didn't think about that mm-hmm. because I had nieces and nephews. And I'm, like, really super close with my niece and nephew. And I'm thinking, no, I, that's not true. I swear to God, it's true. Even no matter how much love you have mm-hmm. for the kids that are around you, I'm telling you, mm-hmm. there is a big difference of... Of of seeing the excitement like on your kid's face, like I want to do this, I want to put this into you because I want you to be happy. Like I yeah. want you to, like I tell my son to still believe in Santa Claus, and some people be like you wrong for that, you wrong for that. You should tell him the truth. Fucking why? These there are boys out here that are eight and nine getting shot down in the street. Why the fuck can't my son believe in Santa Claus? Like have some type of imagination and enjoyment. Before life, because life is going to hit you anyway, mm-hmm. whether you like it or not, and life is going to hit them with the real, regardless. So you don't, yeah. so you don't have to to push that into them. But if you choose to, as a parent, that is your choice. Just don't have your fucking kid come to school telling my kid about Santa. Leave my kid alone. I was just about to say, it's usually the kids when some when a parent goes that route. It's usually the kids that start, uh, not teasing, but like if that ever comes up. Say a six or seven year old at school, and like Santa Claus brought me this. They were like Santa Claus, you know what I mean? One of them people, mm-hmm. one of them kids from down Third Street. Santa Claus ain't no damn Santa Claus. We didn't get nothing. If it was a real Santa Claus, you know what I mean? So right, then all of a they, sudden he's coming home like Mama. Or they'd be like, Well, you know, my my parents told me Santa wasn't real. My Santa ain't real. Santa ain't doing this shit for you. And Santa ain't. <laughs> well, I mean, your mom won't tell you that the government is actually paying half the rent either. 
So if, yeah. if you ain't telling the whole truth about everything, <laughs> nigga, leave some shit out for, for other kids. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. Well, I don't give a fuck who get mad. That pisses me off. I'm like, mm. you have the right to teach your kid whatever you want your kid to know because that is your child. Mm. However, don't ha- if, if I was the type of person to tell my kid this, mm. I would still let him know, but you should not ruin it for anybody else. Mm. Whatever someone else chooses to believe in, that is their choice. I and agree. That has nothing to do with you. But people don't say that shit. People be like, I'm going to tell my kid. Well, congratulations for, <laughs> exactly. you, for you and your miserable ass kid. But don't be sitting up here messing shit up for my kid. My kid still going to believe in Santa. And yes, Santa's black. <laughs> the other white men are helpers. And he's not that fat either. He's he's very, he's <laughs> he's got a nice body. <laughs> you guys be like, why is Santa in your bed? Listen, we got to talk about your Christmas list. Oh, <laughs> uh, look, you got your gifts right. Go down there and play with them. Don't worry about what the fuck me and Santa do. <laughs> the your ass down there and play. He got to get in this chimney real quick. Santa got something for your mama, too. <laughs> Joe has about it. Wake up the next morning, see Santa brings different types of gifts for adults. <laughs> it's New Year's. Do it look like I play with toys? No. <laughs> I certainly do not. <laughs> we got to go ahead and wrap up, but we're going to get you next year. <laughs> now, give me 15 minutes. I'll be down in a minute. <laughs> With that robo. <laughs> <laughs> that robo. <laughs> I ain't never seen you standing without a suit. Look here. I just told you. <laughs> he, still got on his, he still got on his mustache. You know what? Go to sleep. You can't play with these toys. Go to sleep. <laughs> That's what black parents do. Take your ass to sleep. They roll without the belt on it. You got to keep up. <laughs> Be 8 o'clock in the morning. You fuck up, take your ass to sleep. <laughs> I'm going to take all this shit back. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. What <laughs> else do we have? <laughs> Say the same shit at the same time. <sighs> I w- Wait a minute. I got to throw this in before we get done. Now, it's like I'm on the end. I don't have kids, but... One of the things I like to do with my nieces and nephews is the pumpkin carving. I like that more. I think right now the costumes and stuff, like, they enjoy that more. I like seeing whatever they, you know what I mean, uh, dress up as, like, whatever they like. But I like it to be original. Anyway, last year we didn't do it. year before we did, and I kicked ass. I I was like, look, no cheating. We're not bringing no stencils over here. We're not going to have no motherfucking... Cat jumping over the moon, or, or you know, none of that shit. We are gonna. I'm gonna get you the dollar pumpkin carving set with the little spoon. It's gonna take your ass six hours to get all the shit out the pumpkin. I don't give a fuck. We taking it back to old school. And uh, I had about ten, twelve pumpkins, and we all got to it. I like my thing with the holidays. No matter which one it is, I like to find something. We spend some time together and we celebrate it like that. Yeah. And, like, rather, I, I mean, I really did win. I'm not just going to say that I had the best pumpkin when I didn't. It was, like, it was dope as fuck. I'm pretty sure you did. It was. No, I let Facebook judge. I didn't tell them whose pumpkin was who. And, and I won by a couple of votes. <laughs> they knew that shit was yours. <laughs> <laughs> I lined them all up. But the thing I didn't do, and I was selfish. I was selfish. I didn't let them take them home. <laughs> Hell no. I lined my driveway with them. That's why they didn't work hard. They're like, shit, I ain't seeing this shit no more anyway. They had no idea. <laughs> they had no idea they were decorating my front yard. They knew that shit. They said, Uncle Ron, whack ass, go, <laughs> go keep the pumpkins here anyway. <laughs> but the re- I learned, though. I learned a lesson. I'm going to let them go ahead and uh, run. Uh, you can go and run with that. You know what I mean? They lined my walkway up to the door. Had the lights in them. Lights stayed open. I mean, lights stayed on for like three days. Like, they was out there. Like, you know what I mean? It was some, it was some scary shit. But <laughs> about a week later, it wasn't even Halloween yet. Because it was, uh, I think, last uh, last year we uh, got the party. And the weekend before, it was like maybe five, six days like before Halloween. And, like, those pumpkins get real messy when they're out there on the ground. Especially if it's rain. Yes. And just throwing them away, I was pissed. They falling apart. They were soggy. It was like, I don't want that shit in my yard no more. So, yeah, they will be leaving with lovely parting gifts. <laughs> I got to get mine because mine already been outside in the rain. And Kyle was like today when we went outside, ooh, what's wrong with this one? I said, <laughs> first of 
volume three. <laughs> I still had to find them just in case you want to, while well, you got an opinion. I don't want this one. Look, nigga. <laughs> he said, oh, what, what's, <laughs> what's wrong with this one, mama? And they do look real bad when it rains. It's always raining, though. It's cold and rainy. So you really can't help that. So no more outside pumpkins for us. We're going to have a part two of the family carve off. Carve off. <laughs> I I didn't think about this prior, but I'm going to win again. Lies. <laughs> On to something serious. Something that pissed me off. A lot of things pissed me off. From, about to say, wait, what, really? <laughs> from traffic to... Uh, deciding what you're going to eat with your girlfriend just makes you want to. I, I do not advocate domestic violence in any way. But if y'all got into a fight over which I want to eat, I understand you, brother. I understand you. I cannot stand a woman who doesn't know what they want to eat, even though no new restaurants have been built within a 10-mile radius. We go through this every time. Why do we have to speak about what we want to eat for two hours? Then I ain't even hungry no more. You know how sometimes you're so hungry, you ain't hungry no more? Your stomach just tired of growling. You don't even have a strength to keep growling. Now all of a sudden, well, I'm cool. <laughs> it depends. <laughs> I hate it. Because I wasn't like that before, I'm like that now. Because I had to think, what can I eat that's out here? Yeah. A lot of things that I can, can eat or should eat, I should cook at home. I agree. Instead of going out to, to eat it. So... When you think about certain shit, you're kind of thinking of what can I have that would be enjoyable for me? Uh-huh. Because when you just eat anything, you can go anywhere. <laughs> I'm serious. You can go anywhere. You'd be like, shit, you're right. I'm going to slide up on this place to eat this shit. Da, 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 da. But if you ain't that type of person, you can't just be like, I'm going to slide up on this place to eat this shit. And then when you get there, you're like, what the fuck? Yeah. There's nothing for me. <laughs> I guess I'll take the fries. Like, there's nothing. For can't me. go wrong with fries. So, yeah, and that's, well, some of y'all fries are trash. You know what's a good potato? <laughs> it took me back. The ones they make vodka with? Yeah. <laughs> but no. <laughs> My brothers. Hey, do y'all... The fried potatoes. I used to be like, as soon as I get home from school, he know what time it is. Mm-hmm. You in high school, you can get out for me anyway. So that means my shit should be ready. When I, <laughs> my when shit I pull, should be still hot. When I pull up to the scene. <laughs> that grease should already be hot. I'd be pissed off when I get home and ain't ready. I'm like, what you been doing? As soon as you walk in the door, hey, I'm dropping your fries now. <laughs> grease already hot. <laughs> I just dropped them. Give me, go ahead and put your book back. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. I'd be like, shh. Shit, well, I was I was hoping that they would already be ready, but uh, he was like, "I had to cut them." I'm like, "You right, you right. How can I be so rude?" Yeah, exactly. You let them sit in that water for a minute too, so they get a little soft, just a chance. Especially if you ain't got the yellow ones, you got the white, the rusted. You gotta let that shit soak. Look at her with her potato knowledge. You know I, about them spuds? I, I love spuds, like. <laughs> If people say, you stop eating meat, but damn, shouldn't you be thin? First of all, okay, this is a rant. I got a rant for you niggas. Uh Uh-oh, this should be good. First of all, hold up. Tasha, bring me a drink. She about to go off. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, y'all, listen. A little-ass drink, nigga. (laughs) (laughs) I just needed a dab. (laughs) It's supposed to go on and on. AMSR. I'm getting into it. So whatever y'all like to hear. Pickles, um, a can of beans opening. Whatever you like. Just let me know. Send me a request. Sounds like a porn category. (laughs) (laughs) I want to hear ass back here. (laughs) Whoa. 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 (laughs) Slow down, nigga. That ain't what the fuck I'm talking about. (laughs) This is my first show. (laughs) You know, goddamn Pickles. Just get to that raw. <laughs> Squeeze your boobs together. Like, I, I'm done with this shit. This is the first and the last day of the show. It's over. You know what? I'm done with this shit. <laughs> I'm shutting down now. No more fucking requests. You niggas fucked it up. That's the worst thing you could do is let a nigga request some shit. I think it matters what time of the day you're on. His ass be like. <laughs> I can't hear nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh shit. <laughs> Tell your mic up. We got that right ass mic. <laughs> it ain't clear. <laughs> no whack ass. Keep going. <laughs> you right after this there by Ron that got me thinking straight. <laughs> I'm nope. <laughs> it was my it was gonna be my my business venture and it, it ended as quickly as it started. Yeah, you know things ain't right. <laughs> y'all gonna request some stupid ass shit, and then I gotta be like, God damn it. <laughs> no, I said no. Oh shit. I gotta feel like I'm getting no <laughs> I said no <laughs> Gotta start blocking motherfuckers. Like you know what? You're blocked. Okay. Alright, here's my rant. Here's my rant. A lot of people seem to think that when you go vegan or vegetarian or whatever the fuck you do, mm-hmm. that automatically, the, the, that the reason why people want to do it is because they want to get skinny. Mm-hmm. That would be one thing. <laughs> <laughs> that would be one thing. But no. Okay. I can go with that. That is not always the fucking reason. Just because you see people, just because you see people and you think like, Okay, they should they should be thinner. There are some people who are thin who are very fucking unhealthy. And when they go to their doctor's appointments, it shows. There are skinny people who take medication because the motherfuckers are sick. Because they're not as healthy <laughs> as they as you would think that they look because they're thin. So don't think that just because you see someone and they say they became a vegan or vegetarian. You thinking like shit? Well, you should be like in a size one or a size two. That is not the case. The point is when you go to your doctor's appointments that you get the okay, the all clear, the damn you are really healthy. Mm-hmm. The things are looking good for you. I don't see a heart attack in your future. You know things of that nature. That's great news, by the way. That is wonderful news. Things of that nature. There are certain things that you eat. That can help with um, not causing cancer or heart disease or different people do things for different reasons. So there are some people who do this because that's their main focus of losing weight. Mm -hmm. And there's some people who do this because, hell, they just want to live a little longer. Mm -hmm. So remember that when you think of certain shit. Because it's and it's mostly a lot of black people I see saying this shit. And I'm just like, God damn it. Yeah. Oh shit! Did we people be on some bullshit? We learn nothing. We learn. This is why they talk about us. <laughs> this is why they fucking talk about us. Mm-hmm. I know this for a reason. Endurance is everything. Endurance is everything. You cannot just look at somebody and think, ah, oh, well, you know, I could outrun this person. I had somebody tell me that too. I'm like, yeah, I go jogging all the time, and they're like, ah, oh, whatever, I could jog with you, and I'm like, I'm sure you can't, but mm-hmm. like, okay. And he's like, no, no, I can, I can. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, let's go. Mm-hmm. We went. Boy, took off. Let's go. I was like, <laughs> and he was far. <laughs> <laughs> and then five minutes later, I passed him. And mm-hmm. he couldn't breathe. And I'm like, I told you. You just kept on walking. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's I see what you, you get. I see you in the beginning. <laughs> like, you got three more miles to go. Yeah. Sucker. Like, come on. Let's go. <laughs> I can hear you say that while you walk by. <laughs> and he cut through the... <laughs> Cut through this shit like, yeah, I thought so. He's like, yeah, this shit. Uh, yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> but you thought such your motherfucking ass pump some pump some weight. <laughs> your motherfucking ass is still good. Like your endurance is everything. The inside is everything. It's it's your health is what's most important. After your health, everything else will fall into place. Mm-hmm. So remember that, people. Not that this liquor is helping me any. But remember that. We only poison ourselves on the weekend. We do. We poison, <laughs> we poison ourselves a lot. I got to bring this up, too. A lot. Like, as far as endurance, like, four and five miles, no, I'm not ready for that. But I will have to, I do have to say this. I was judged. <laughs> I was judged by my fucking cover a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard nobody say that. I like how I use that. Motherfucker had the nerves to judge me by my fucking cover, dog. They cover judge. <laughs> they fucking cover judge me. All right, I work with a couple of youngsters. <laughs> and like one of them, I raced him about maybe six, seven months ago. And he's a he's a lean cat, probably only weighed like 180, like, 
kind of tall, 6'1". He swore up and down that he could just break my ass on a race. So I'm like, okay. Now, mind you, that I didn't stretch that day. <laughs> okay. Very important. He beat me by about a foot, and I swear to God I felt old. Said <laughs> a foot. He beat me by about a foot. They gave me my props because I did hung. I did hung. I did hang with him. But it's like the last, like maybe like 10 feet, he pulled off. He hit like he hit gear two. <laughs> and I just almost felt, I felt a little like a a twinge in my thigh. <laughs> like something was going like a Charlie horse or something. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago, another one works out. I always get on him because I swear to God, this motherfucker never, he's like, he's always busy on leg day. Skinny his legs, this motherfucker's upper body is just like tone. I'm like, bro. <laughs> I was on his ass like, bro, look, I don't give a damn how much you lift. You're not fat. Your legs ain't shit. Look at your legs, dog. <laughs> I beat him three races in a row. He's like 29, 30. I'm 41. Mind you, 100 pounds heavier. Your legs. <laughs> your legs is fuck. Your legs are struggling. <laughs> Look, legs have a day for a reason, nigga. You need to show up. <laughs> shit, they got their own day, and you ain't fucked with none of them. But I felt good about that shit. And the and the worst part is like I don't know what the fuck he eats because like I mean you look at him, he's a muscular, like in shape, I'm kind of guy. But this motherfucker took thirty minutes to catch his breath. My fat ass was done. Like you want to do another one? Like, and I'm not the most, I'm nowhere near in shape. Nowhere fucking near. And I felt so, I tease his ass every day. Like, don't, hey, stop that cover judging, nigga. <laughs> stop it. Yeah, and you know what? I'm telling you, a lot of things come into play when it comes to that. A lot of things. Like, health is, is, is different. It's different for everybody. And what you things that you specifically need to focus on may not be what somebody else needs to focus on. So just remember those things. Just remember that it's not always about your outer appearance because it's not just your inner. Your inner is what keeps you alive. Mm -hmm. Like you have a fat ass and die. You have an ass <laughs> and, and fucking die. Like yeah. it's about the inside. And then after that, everything else falls into place. I'll tell you what I don't like with weight loss. <laughs> Again, I'm not picking on women, but I got to say this. I see a lot of y'all. What is it like? They used to, I used to only see like, uh, is the correct term like, what is bulimia? That's when you eat a lot and like throw up or something like yeah. that. Well, all right, what's anorexia? <laughs> like, is that just bulimia when they starve themselves? Yeah, anorexia is, is what it's, <clears throat> is the outcome of bulimia it's what happens it's okay what you, the state that they're in mm -hmm. due to like bulimia is now it's a disease it's because you can't once you start like really once you start it's not like they could just be like one day like okay i'm done mm -hmm. or i'm not gonna do that again mm -hmm. like a lot of them have to go get medical help for that to stop doing that because your body your body adjusts to everything it's kind of like different stuff that we eat Mm -hmm. Bad shit that we eat, our bodies adjust to it. So it's not saying that it's good. It's just making space in your body for it. Uh -huh. <clears throat> That's bulimia. Basically, it just, it, 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 your body gets used to not holding anything down. Mm -hmm. And it can make you sick when you are eating mm -hmm. because it's not used to taking that in. Yeah. So, yeah. I see a lot of beautiful black women say that they need to lose weight. And, of course, others' opinions don't affect theirs. If they say, I feel I need to lose weight, that's what they're going to do. You can say, oh, you know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with you. I think you're fine. I... And I'll go with it anyway. So, okay. I've watched over the years some females lose weight, start eating better. And you're kind of, from the outside, from the outside looking in, okay, you're like, okay. All right, looking good, looking good. Oh, hell yeah, great, great. Wait a, wait a, wait a fucking minute, stop. It's like they keep on going. And it, I don't really understand it. I don't think, like, we don't go to the doctor for a lot of things. Like, maybe that's something that needs to be addressed. If somebody can go from, 
what's a good a what's a good weight for a woman like one seventy five? Somebody would say like that. No, that's overweight. Okay. Your at your weight is de- your weight is depending on your height. Yeah, but don't go with that white person height chart. Yeah, but that's but that's basically that's what it what it says. If you are like I think one like one thirty is the average. One thirty one forty is like the average. And then anything over that is like going into overweight and then going to obesity and then. I was about to say they start. I've seen some women be called obese, and it's like, whoa! Like in what world? Okay. The thing I don't understand is when they just keep losing. I've seen, and I really felt bad about thinking it, but I'm like, you were fucking beautiful at first. You just did not stop. It was like you were so. Uh, consumed by this weight loss, you just kept going, and now you're like bones. Like it doesn't look like natural. That's just me on the outside looking in. It just came out of nowhere. But yeah, it's like wow, you should have stopped. So I have a rebuttal to that. My rebuttal to that is whatever looks good for them mm-hmm. is for them. I agree, and it could be. And I've seen a couple people. I'm like, whoa, like you know, I like you where you were before. Mm-hmm. However, if you didn't like you where you were before, mm-hmm. or whatever reason, you may have been there. You may have said, well, I have size five clothes, and I wanted to be in a size of five. And, yeah. and sometimes it's not necessarily just losing weight, because there's a difference between a person can be 150, and another person can be 150, and they look completely different. It's yeah. because of, of muscle. Like, is this person just losing weight, or are they toning? Toning comes in, in into play a lot, and it mm-hmm. comes into lifting weights. Mm-hmm. Comes into play a lot when it comes to weight loss and how you want to look. Like a lot of people that you see that you like, okay, she looks good. She looks is because she's toned. She or he, e- even he. Like I've seen dudes that I'm like, I don't know how to describe these chests, but some dudes have chests to where they're fit, but there's like. No washboard abs or nothing like that, but mm. you can tell they're fit. It's just mm. that there's absolutely nothing there. It's just like mm. stomach. And then there's some dudes who are fit, and you see like four packs, six packs, eight packs, twelve packs, and you just like, oh, okay. They go up to twelve. <laughs> it's a twelve. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. But but you see this, and you're like, oh, okay. You know, like this is. Because it's different for everybody, how different people work out. So I've said that before, too. I've been like, I think you were fine where you were. However, whatever's good for you is good for you because it's hard. It it is hard when you get, especially if you've always been that way. Like for you to get to where you're going to be because it it takes, it's not just like working out. Working out is just like 20%. Yeah. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. eat, changing your eating habits, changing different things, that shit is hard. So yeah. when I see people, and I've seen other people make fun of them, like, ah, oh, you post your workout. Shut the fuck up. They post whatever they want to. They, I have no problem with that. Yeah, you know what? Like, and I'll see some people like, oh, this is all you post about. But that's that's where, where they're going. Mm-hmm. That's what they want to do. Like, sometimes I think people just want to hear people talk about their lives in negative ways and certain shit. Because when you dab on to something, like you start your business and this is all you talk about, like, oh, my business, my business. Mm -hmm. Nothing's wrong with that. No, hell no. Talk about what you do if you say, well, shit, I'm getting fit and I feel better and this is what I want to talk about. Talk about that shit. If you go to school and you want to talk about that shit, talk about that shit. I always say shit. I don't give a fuck. When I go through my spurts of my my fitness journey and I talk (laughs) about it, I say spurts, and I talk about the shit all the time, I don't give a fuck who like to unfollow me. Yeah, I agree with that, and I'm glad you brought that up. A lot of the people I'm not that close with when I say that, okay, and this is just from my point of view, I understand that, my opinion. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, I think you should have stopped a little while ago. It's like, if you were 175, let's say, and you said, and your original goal, we saw you say, I just want to get down to 145, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you're at 115, I'm like, dude, whoa, like, what are you doing? It's like... And if that was you, I would say, Bianca, you're getting too fucking small. Your head is fucking huge. I would say, you mind, <laughs> mind your business, you big-headed bastard. I do whatever I want to. I got to go to the gym. Ah, and then run out of here. I just think, I mean, you don't like to see, like, people, like, uh, people don't say it, but, like, sometimes you can be Facebook friends with people seven, eight, ten fucking years. Y'all, some you may not even 
like I've ever met. But over the years, I have conversations like you might console each other in boxes when a loved one dies and see you feel cool with this person. Like some people, like you're actually genuinely cool with, yeah. and you just kind of when they lose so much weight that they went from like uh, they were well, they might have had a medical condition, yeah. they were unhealthy, and then it's like when you lose weight and it's like you get to a certain point of like, okay, that would be perfect. And all of a sudden you start looking unhealthy because you've lost a hundred pounds. It's just like, sometimes I just think about that. Like, but then you have to think too. They might tell me to mind my business, but I'll be concerned sometimes, like genuinely concerned, like damn. But then you have to think too, like some people don't tone while they're losing weight. Some people lose the weight and then go to toning. Yeah. So you may look a certain way because my friend did that. He went to losing weight and I'm like, damn, like, you lost a lot of weight, like. Mm-hmm. But then when he started toning, I'm like, "Damn, okay, you know, okay." Like, I, I see what you did. <laughs> I see. What, I, I see you playing. That's right. Okay, I don't fuck. That was me fucking up. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was me. But because different people have different ways of doing things, now, yeah. I, I just kind of feel like one. If I didn't tell you when your ass was getting big, I'm not going to tell you getting too small <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> you, if you would tell my motherfucking ass that I was getting big, mm-hmm. please, like, just let hey, me. But I got the type of friends that tell me I got big. That's because y'all roast each other all the time. Yeah. See, if, if, you, if, you, have, if you have roasting friends, which we all do, mm-hmm. we all do. Well, not we all do, because some of y'all get no. Too some upset. of them, some of y'all get too upset. Y'all can't hang with with the <laughs> with, with the roasting. Yeah, well, my friends with the levels like there's no hose bar. We've been doing this yeah. for like years yeah. and years, yeah. and like they have no like. I'll be sitting like somebody come, like I might be sitting on the couch playing Madden, and got my shirt off or something. You know how niggas is. They see the door open. First thing they do is peek in. There's no knock first. It's like, <laughs> damn nigga, put your shirt on, you fat motherfucker. Blah blah blah. And yeah, I have gained weight over the years because. It's like now I'm not as active as like I work a lot. Yeah. And when I'm off, it's like I won't use the uh the tired excuses like now I just don't like move like I used to as far as like going out, running the streets, blah, blah, blah. With your thugs. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it should start singing the song. You can run the streets with <laughs> your <laughs> Hey, Michelle like came with that bitch. I was like, oh That shit was dope. That shit was dope. I'll give you that. <laughs> like, for real. That shit was dope. And then when Storm <laughs> came in with the rap, representing the ladies, you go, Storm. <laughs> I don't know where the hell you at, but you did us good. You, rest- did, <laughs> you did us justice, because I done used a couple of them lines on a bunch of niggas. I thought I bet you using pickup lines. Shout out to the 90s. <laughs> it was cool, but I ain't the one to play the fool. I said, oh, shit. She <laughs> to it and said, ah. Is you know the, I never knew her name. Storm? Her name is Storm. No shit. They call me Storm from the Is that the only song Storm. she ever did? I think she did more than that. The good rappers never get the recognition. The lady rappers who like to keep their clothes on, we got to remember, this was like in yeah. the late 90s. You know what I mean? Well, the mid to late 90s. So after that shit, chicks start taking off their clothes. Before, you could have on a full sweatsuit <laughs> and rap and be like, that bitch, she cold. She cold. Yeah, you remember Moni in the middle? Yeah. You, saw, you remember how she used to dress? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, yeah, now, now look, now you got to show some, if you ain't in the bathing suit, you ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it out. It's sad. Ass has taken over talent. And this is my point. I agree with that. Different people, like when you say, where you could say someone was looks good how they are, mm-hmm. some dudes be like, no, like you need to. I literally know dudes who are like, and and black, white, all kind of dudes, of different races, who would tell a person, if you are not at this weight, I wouldn't find them attractive. Yeah. To where the point where you'd be like, no, this person bad, <laughs> and they like, yeah, bad looking. Yeah. You know what I mean? So different people just like different things, and that is one thing that we have to let people. People do. If they lose too much weight and they look like a bobblehead, just tip them a little and just see what they do. But don't just, <laughs> but just let them live. You know what I'm saying? Let them live. I've grown out of that. I'm not one of those people who's like, okay, all right, if she ain't got a fat ass, she ain't right. If she ain't got big titties, she ain't cool. Like, I don't know. I don't think like that because, like, all right, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. So why would I expect everybody to be mine? Mm-hmm. It's like, you can't go out here and just say, okay, I prefer, like, even, uh, you have no interest in dealing with this woman, but you got to look like this. Mm -hmm. And you voice that, like, there's no reason for you to say that. It's like, 
I mean, my girl is with me, like, shit, who knows? Like, you know how everybody got their type? Everybody says they have their type, but some of the ones, like, a lot of the women or men who even say it, like, okay, but you got three different baby mamas, and none of them fit that mold. <laughs> it's like, okay, so how is that your type? Like, no, I got to have my women like this. So I don't uh, place those standards on people. It's like, okay, if I like you, I like you for what you are. I'm not going to say, okay. I'm not, I will never, there will never be a day where I was like, like encourage my girl to get like breast implants or or say okay you need uh, you need to get your nose done. But she got to make a certain amount of money. Or you need to get your cheeks bone cheekbones right. Yeah, and you know what? I always thought about that show where I said that, and I'll tell you where that came from. Now that's one of those things I admit is still in me because, and I think I almost made a post about this this week, and I have to say this. We as black people put so many stipulations on. <laughs> I have no idea why she's dancing. There's no music. My bad, because I keep hearing this. This when you said you don't have no type, mm-hmm. and then I was like Ray Sherman. I ain't got no type. <laughs> and then I thought to myself, like I, I just thought to myself in my head, like uh-huh. it's a fucking contradiction. You ain't got no type. Bad bitches is the only thing. That's a type, nigga. Yeah, that's a type. That's, that's a definitely type. a type. A bad bitch is a type. So when I was dancing, I was thinking like, <laughs> why the fuck am I dancing to this? This shit's fucking stupid. Like, you, this, but the beat's nice. Though. So what can I say? Okay, go ahead. I still like the song. I do right. too. I'm just saying it's a contradiction. It is. It's like saying, I don't eat no green food, but I like broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be like, nigga. I would not put that on a new album. <laughs> You'll be like, uh, no, I do got one song called Broccoli. Give it on the. When I'm talking about that paper, though. <laughs> <laughs> With the cheese on it. <laughs> before I forget, before I forget, because she's about to get silly, I got to say this. I think we as black people put too many stipulations on people that we uh, would possibly be interested in being involved with. Fuck. I do. And the reason why I held on to a financial uh, standard is because a lot of women throw that at you. Yep, you did it again. You did what you what we just talked about. No, you have to. There's no way in hell. Now we know that. Um, we know that your news feed is tailored to uh, sunshine, no rain. But I gotta, I gotta you little, have to know. I got a little rain. <laughs> a little rain in there when I'm feeling like getting a little nosy. <laughs> you have to know that women expect a man to have a, at least be a certain way financially. I don't give a Shit. damn what they say about physically, the way he looks, blah, blah, blah. There are a lot of guys out here. As long as you got your paper right, you can get a bad woman. I think it's a, okay, in that case, yeah. In that case, that is true, but but you just basically said the type of of women that is mm. like the women who be like, "I'm a bad bitch," or you know, you doing some. No, that's most women though. No, you doing. Yeah, it is. It is. It listen. It is some broke niggas right now who just ate a lobster meal. <laughs> who just ate a lobster ass meal? Uh huh. Nigga ain't got no job, and and he about to drop Keisha off of work tomorrow morning. I agree with that. Because he keeping the car. Not a hundred. I, I never said a hundred percent, but I guarantee you this. If he keeping the car. If she's approached by You know what? A lot of women may just not know that guy yet. But when they meet him, that nigga ain't dropping her off at work no more. And she's, she's gone. And she still gonna she she'll be with him, but she's still gonna fuck with Tyrone's ass. Cause Tyrone be dropping these dogs. <laughs> Listen, it happens. Everybody could drop D. Listen, not greatly. <laughs> Listen. This was say greatly. Not. I, I will say this. I've, I've heard it. I've had conversation with people that be like, broke niggas really know how to put it down because what the fuck else do they got to do? They Yeah, they got to fucking have a place so, to live. So when they putting it down, that's their job. That is their job. Girl, you being worked. But it's a lot of men out here that will do the same thing. They got their shit together. A lot of men out here that will do that, they got their shit together. Who put it down? The fuck yeah. You'd be like, you at work all the time. And I can only speak for myself. I don't, I don't know shit about no other niggas game out here. But I'd be like, what you, 
<laughs> we try to sit around and talk about it. Nigga, listen. <laughs> I mean, but you do hear females talk about it. You know what I mean? No, it's not okay. like a female so, won't talk about it with a man. I've seen, here's what I've seen. I've seen the contradiction too. I've seen females that say, I wouldn't fuck with a nigga who ain't got this, this, that, and the third. But either you got kids who ain't got this, this, that, and the third with somebody like that, or you say that shit and you still end up fucking with somebody who's not there. Yeah. Now, will I say that there are certain women who, who, feel themselves a little bit more than others who feel here we go who feel like preach no i'm serious who who feel like a, no if, if he ain't got this or if he ain't got that i don't i don't want it like i don't want it he's not up there where, where he needs to be mm-hmm. hell yeah there are women like that there are women like that there I, I will not say that they're they're not what i will say is for standards if you, I don't think that you should expect from someone what you do not currently have. Yep. And I, but if it happens, but I, that's not from, that's not me saying that I don't think that you deserve someone who has more than you right now. But I'm saying as far as an expectation, mm-hmm. like if, if you are currently getting your shit together, you don't really have it together, but you meet someone who does. Mm-hmm. And y'all mesh together? Mm-hmm. Shit, that's good. Whether you a man or woman, vice versa in whatever situation. Mm-hmm. That's cool for y'all because y'all saw past that and you like, okay, we can work together. I can help this person, man or woman. Mm-hmm. I can help this person get get their shit together. Mm-hmm. Because the person who ain't got their shit together may mentally have their shit together where the person who has it financially may mm-hmm. not have it mentally together. I agree. You mesh well together. You 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 work. But what I will say is if you don't, I don't think you should be the type of person that like expects somebody to do more than you when you don't ha- when you don't have it. There are a lot of people out here like that though. But there's a lot of people out here in a, in, in, who feel entitled for a lot of situations. Like if you look at a job and a person say, "Well, shit, I should get this job," mm-hmm. and you have like no experience, no qualifications. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> but that's that's like anything. Like you feel entitled. You feel like no, this should be mine. Mm-hmm. Or if they see somebody else winning, no, that should be mine. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of people who feel entitled, who feel like, yeah, this is what I need or this is what I deserve. Mm-hmm. So, and and it's because we as human beings, all of us, all of us do, we mm-hmm. all do, including myself. Sometimes we, sometimes we can add the 10 to the two on our shit when really we need to just take a step back and look and see what we bring to the table, not just financially. What we bring to the... Because people always talk about what you bring to the table and they talk about financially. I'm not just talking about financially. Exactly. Because a, a, a lot of a lot of your expectations are what you want in a woman or what you want in a man. Mentally, spiritually, mm-hmm. everything cannot be hitting where you would like it to hit. Mm-hmm. It, so when a person says, well, shit, I got money, I got this, that means absolutely fucking nothing. That's great that in that one area you're good. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that you're great at understanding. That doesn't mean that you're you're great at, at praying for me. That doesn't mean that you're great in... The, you can still be missing certain things. So you get with somebody who's okay with that. Mm-hmm. And vice versa. Somebody who gets with you to say... Mm-hmm. I mean, different things are different. But I just feel like you shouldn't expect somebody to do certain things if you're not there yet. Like, mm-hmm. you can't expect them to have financially everything together and you're not there yet Mm -hmm. you can't expect them to have their life in order mentally and you still got old issues with your family Mm -hmm. that you haven't settled or with your job that you haven't settled that's bothering you all the time Mm -hmm. you can't expect these things from people that's why when i said i expect him not to have any kids when i meet him uh, you know i would like for it to happen but if it doesn't i'm not upset i'm not upset all right uh and I totally agree with ninety two percent. I'm okay with <laughs> I totally agree with a lot of what you just said. But and I agree with mostly about the things that you bring to the table. When I see people put their list on Facebook of these are the things and they put it up uh, every day. Some of the people, male and female, a lot of females, you know, I'm like, hey, this is what you have to bring to the table. And it's like, okay, these are all financial or material things. Those things, they matter, but they don't matter. It's like, okay, unless you're dealing with somebody that's fucking 19 years old, okay, if you meet somebody 
we should just automatically assume that they can take care of themselves. Mm-hmm. Now, in a perfect world, we would be like, okay, all right, this person is going to work every fucking day. He he don't he's not gonna come right in asking me for shit. Now, I can see if you don't want to fucking deal with a dude that's thirty thousand dollars in debt, making eleven bucks an hour, and his car is on his last leg. A roaches and rats in the house fighting for supremacy. Hey, hey. <laughs> we've all. <laughs> yes, we've all been there. We've all been over a friend's house. <laughs> or a family member. Or it could have been you. Growing <laughs> up, tough times. What you do is. <laughs> what you do is you go get that homebound barrier. Spray that shit down. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you got to go get some smoke bombs. Why every time somebody say this? <laughs> I mean, sometimes that shit is true. I will say this shit is true. So, because some people live next door, meh, let me tell you. <laughs> they left in a hurry. And when they start cleaning that bitch up, I see why. God damn it. God damn. I saw y'all was living over there? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm looking at there when they open the door. Like, <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Did y'all have room? <laughs> Find him on Facebook. Y'all know y'all some nasty motherfuckers. <laughs> Why would y'all have me living next door to y'all? Y'all over there living like that. <laughs> I've been looking for you for two weeks. <laughs> tell you this shit. I got a complaint, motherfucker. God damn. Don't you ever bring your ass back over here. And I'm about to block you. I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Go ahead. I'm done. I'm done. All right, this is the thing I would just like to see more of. And of course, nobody gives a fuck. But you can give your opinion on what you like to see more of. When you want to find a person, don't just put financial things to it. I mean, financial expectations on it. What about, and and females hate when I say this. Well, not all of them. I, I don't know all females, but I get a little backlash when I say, okay. Your delivery sucks. It does, but I don't try to sugarcoat it. it, it because there's no way that you can tell me that just because, all right, if you're making $20,000 less than me, but you got a fat ass and you look cute in makeup, that doesn't make us equal. So, I can't pay no bills with your ass. So basically what you're saying is all the people who've said this, they have a big booty and cute, but they have nothing else. That's basically what I just said. Yes. So, oh. Yes. A lot of the, I'm going to put it out so there. Everybody? I'm. I'm about to, not all are blessed with the perfect onion, but they seem to think, they seem to think so. You know what I mean? And uh, as a male looking at it, I can say, uh, all right, you got a point. That motherfucker is fat. But bitch, that ain't what I'm looking for. That little thing, shape it up. (laughs) Get that thing in order. The only thing I will say is, how about stimulating conversation? I like a, I like a smart, I like a smart woman. I like a person that can talk. And if you're not, let's just say that you're not a big talker. You're smart, but you don't like to engage in. Some people like to talk more than others. This is true. Some people will read the news and they just want to discuss it. Not everybody's like that. You might, I look, I had a long day. I don't give a fuck about no stock market. You know what I mean? Some people are different. That doesn't mean that they're not capable of it. Right. But I like a person, and if you're not, be a good listener. You know what I mean? There's a lot of things that come with a relationship. Like, my girl might not give a fuck about the shit that I'm talking about. But being a good listener makes you feel good. Like, okay, we have a conversation. All right, I think I've got to the point where she's fucking bored with it now. So I'll back off. (laughs) You know what I mean? There's a lot of things that you can bring into a relationship that make people mesh. You know what I mean? That make you... A good couple that that is outside of material and financial things. If you are just, first of all, have a good heart. Don't just be some um, some evil. And men can be like this too. This ain't just women. Some people are just fucking evil. Some people have been through a lot of things in their life. And for some reason or another, they just don't know how to let that go. And they bring it into every relationship that they're in. Now, all of a sudden, I have to become a therapist. I have to fucking on the side in between my job and whatever the fuck else I'm doing. I have to figure out how to break through these layers with you so I can get to the the root of why 
you have this wall up and you won't let me in. It's like, okay, I don't want to have a I don't want to have a relationship with a person where I have to take years peeling back layers to get to something. Hurt people hurt people. I I think it's people stay in relationships like that because it is because if you feel like you're the one that could break that mm-hmm. or get to that, it's like, oh, what a feeling. Like or I just it is. I get what you said. I do. I I get I think re- relationships, not just relationships with a significant other, but relationships with coworkers, every, it all works when you figure out what is going on with you. Mm-hmm. You are the home base. You are the, now do I feel like when you get, when you step back, isolate yourself, get yourself together in all aspects, mm-hmm. because even giving or being a good person or giving the same back to your partner that, you will expect them to do. I think that is very important. Like you said, listening, that's very important. Making sacrifices. That's very important. Like I don't mind being 50, 50 on those things. Like if you do do these things for for me, I should have no issue doing these things for you. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't even, you know, like if you put me first, when things happen, no matter what, what happens, what goes on, I should be putting you first, no matter what happens, no matter what goes on. Like you are, you are it. And, but some some stuff sometimes it doesn't work like that, and sometimes <clears throat> if you are happy with what you have, that's cool. As far as setting having standards, just don't just be mindful of what you ask somebody else to to give to you. Like fix yourself. I believe in that. I believe. I never wanted to be the type of person to be like, well, this is just me, and that's how I am. That's there. There's there's no. There's no I hate that. There's no evolving in that. There there's no there's no growth in that. There's no you cannot become a better person or expect a different outcome when you are satisfied with the this is just who I am. Mm-hmm. You are going to constantly get what you get and that's it and you should not complain about it. And that's with anybody like I said significant other with relationships at your mm-hmm. job with anything. You are going to continue to get the same result because you keep putting out the same thing. Mhm. Like it's crazy to me. And a lot of a lot of adults, men and women, a lot I say, well, I can't put a percentage on it. I haven't done the research. But I will say this. A lot of them are not open to um how can I say this? If a person just comes out and says, Okay, um, these are the things that um you'll have to deal with or something like that. Like, I think it depends on what it is. If it's little things, and even those little things, if you love a person, y'all get to know each other. Like, because I'm a stubborn person. Lord, listen. But. Shout out. Can we shout out to Tasha? No, we shout, cannot. Tasha, shout out to you. <laughs> shout out to you and everything, all the wonderful things that you do. <laughs> you deserve this. You deserve this shout out. You deserve a whole show. <laughs> um, I've seen with what you deal with. And, um. No, 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 takes, no. It takes a lot. <laughs> Takes a strong no, woman. It, uh, I, takes a strong woman with this. This is exactly what I'm about to tell you. A lot of the things that she has a type of personality to where, if I see, and I'm an observant person, it's like <laughs> some people don't pay attention to the reactions or the moves of the person they're with after they do or say something. It's like. I don't think I think you should be mature enough to see, like, okay, when I say this, I want to act like this. It's like they don't, uh, she don't ghetto go off on the bullshit, but I could just see, like, okay, um, she's not a big fan of that. <laughs> she's not, a, she's not a fan. I like it. <laughs> so slowly, those things start to taper off. And if you really want growth with it, you're gonna have to look at yourself. Like, yes, I'm still a stubborn person. They can. Uh, be outburst, but you don't want to hurt the person that you're with, so you will fucking tailor certain things. If you love them, if you don't, you're just going to be one of the people to say, look, you have to deal with this if you want to be with me. I think that's unfair. Like, both ways, like, she never came into any aspect of this and said, okay, this is how I am, and I'm I'm saying you're just going to have to deal with that shit. Well, bad things, I should say. Like she never just said, "Okay, well, I like to argue." So, uh, so we gonna have, we gonna get it. 
shit, two good ones in a week or else, um, shit, I ain't fucking with you. You know what I mean? That's the type of shit I can't deal with. Anything other than that, like, I don't want to fucking come home and go to war with the woman that you're supposed to love. Like, no, arguing all that shit, I, I can't deal with. But you know what? In, in saying that, this is what I will say. In saying that, like, and this is what I mean by different people want different things. And one thing as human beings we have to understand is to respect what somebody else want, which may not be what we agree with, mm-hmm. but it, 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 this is what type of, of person that you are. Like I have a best friend that's like, he doesn't, he, not wanting someone who wants to argue all the time, mm-hmm. not that, but he wants someone who's going to check him when he needs to be checked. Like sometimes he's like, I can fuck up. And sometimes he, and I'm right now, I'm that friend that's like, hey. Mm-hmm. Hey, like you, you know, like I'm, I'm not going to give you time to think about this shit. Like what you know, you, you need this. <laughs> Let me deliver it to you. And then he'll be like, you, you right. After thinking about that shit, you right. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and then some people are that I'm going to just let you check, like figure this, like, and then you think like, damn, that was kind of fucked up. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And different people want and need different things and nothing is wrong with that. But do you want to be with someone who wants to argue all the time? I know I don't, but some people thrive off that shit. I can't fucking stand it. So, One, I made that clear in the beginning. And the good thing about it was that she was just looking like, and, and that was one of the things that came from past relationships. She was kind of, I guess she was kind of just like taking out like, okay, um, that who you been with, nigga? You know what I mean? If you got a fucking... Like, write me an email or a long thousand page, a thousand word letter and say, you don't want to argue. That means that you've been through that. And I never had to worry about it with her, but I still put it out there at first because I just didn't want to go into that. It's like, there's no way. If you, to me, the way I look at relationships is that it's a friend, like a friend, you, you know, a real good friend, but you can fuck them. <laughs> But you have to- a really good friend. Real, real good friends have disagreements, but you don't just motherfucking start scrapping or start just yelling and blah blah blah. Well, at least well, here's, me and my friends don't. Well, here's the difference. Here's the difference. I've seen you and your friends argue. <laughs> here's the, here's the difference. Not nah, we didn't not, scrap. Not, uh, not no 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 no. You didn't scrap. Not at all. Now that's a male testosterone there, to get tossed around, but was, she doesn't possess there, that. There was no scrapping. <laughs> there, was, there was no little scrappy. No pause were late. You talking about me and Mike? <laughs> no 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 no. What what I'm saying is this. This is what I'm saying too. Like you also know as far as a balance. Like you can argue up and down. You you personally you need someone who's not going to argue with you. Mm-hmm. It just because it's not the fact that sometimes the person would probably want to say the opposite too. Like, yeah, my man doesn't like debate or argue at all either. You know what I mean? Like, but that's that balance for y'all. That is that is that balance. So that works for you. Yeah, it works okay. great. And I see what you're saying. She's a non-combative person. And I'm the type to where the slightest debate comes up, I want to debate it. So, I think if she was anywhere over the top with it, then we would argue for no fucking reason. And that's, this is this is my point. But that is also my point of saying sometimes we need to step back and look at ourselves because mm-hmm. for that reason, mm-hmm. for that reason of saying, I can argue all the time, and this person doesn't really argue with me. Mm-hmm. That makes you think like, damn, maybe sometimes I should shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. Or maybe sometimes I trip over shit that I shouldn't even fucking say shit about. Because yeah. if this person is doing that, mm-hmm. I should kind of be that same type of person and give that same thing back mm-hmm. because that's what I'm getting. Mm-hmm. And just because a person doesn't say anything about that mm-hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that they probably don't want to see a change in me. Mm-hmm. They're just they're just accepting of like, I know he's going to check himself later. Mm-hmm. Which you do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But just saying, and that is this is my point because I'm like that. Like, I'm a debater. I'm a debater. I When I get into it, I'm sarcastic. I don't get mad when I get into it with people. I become an asshole. Like, I've had plenty of people, males and females, that's like, nigga, I really wanted to fight you. Because mm. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm mm. not going to, I'll make crazy faces and I'll, I'll irritate the shit out of you. I mean, because mm. I don't care. <laughs> and that's the worst mm. because I'm a mental person. I feel like 
I'm not going to piss you off to get you to where the worst thing you could do to somebody is if they feel in some type of way, is that like you don't care? Like, mm-hmm. I don't care. Like, they're great. That's your opinion. Mm-hmm. And then that pisses people off. I have that bad. So I would have to be with somebody who's joking and funny like me mm-hmm. because you got to understand, I'm not coming from a hard place when I do that. But a person who's too into their feelings would be like, I don't like when you do that. You know what I mean? Or you make it mm-hmm. another person who who's just a jackass like me would be like, oh, so you've been an asshole. Mm-hmm. A little. And you get that understanding from that person. But I like to, I, I do though. But I'll, <laughs> I'll still argue and debate. So I couldn't be with someone who likes to argue. Mm-hmm. I, I also couldn't be with somebody who's just nonchalant, like, mm-hmm. like whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, because. I do still want some type of response from you. You know what I mean? I don't. I do. I want some. Ty- <laughs> I want some type of response from you because I feel like if you are not letting out your frustration with me, mm-hmm. that shit going somewhere. Mm-hmm. That shit is going somewhere. Like I, I have to feel like I want you to. I want you to. I don't want to argue, and I. There's a difference between arguing and debating. Mm-hmm. And then just having a, a miscommunication. Mm-hmm. And I think us as people, we confuse that. We think a disagreement is automatically an argument. Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, this is a disagreement, let's have communication with it. Mm-hmm. And let's figure out where we are. We are so bad at having a conversation and understanding somebody's viewpoint. Mm-hmm. I'll argue with somebody, but then I'll be like, shit, I understand where you're coming from. And people yeah. have been like, you have been like, motherfucker, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, yeah, we just saying it differently. But I get where you're coming from. Like, it's Yeah, just, I remember that show you went in on me. Well, then at the end of it, it was like, hold on, we saying the same but, shit. But, I'm but, like, but dude, hold on. My fucking face is red right now. How come you didn't say it a long time ago? You pulled that out of me. But we saying the same thing <laughs> because it is. It's kind of like I'll debate with you and then let's communicate about it. Yeah. And that is, and I think in relationships, <laughs> even co-working relationships or whatever relationship that you have, I think that is the start of of success. It's communication with anything. If I don't fucking like my job before I leave this bitch, I'm gonna tell you I don't like my job. Yeah. And if we can fix it, we can fix it. If we can't, I gotta get out of here. But I communicated with you first. And I think that's the problem with us. Like, especially black people, we don't communicate. We don't communicate, we don't talk. A lot of beefs would be squashed if people just fucking talk. Yeah, if, I agree with that. If people just talked, if people just actually sat down and instead of just are getting into it with one each other, had an actual conversation, and then you can see the shit ain't even that deep. It's mm-hmm. not even that fucking bad. Like me and you, we had a that show that we got into it, and you was like, um, and we didn't really get into it. it, was, it oh, we got into it. We did not get into <laughs> it. See, and to me, I don't consider getting into <laughs> it. I, I consider that like I'm fighting you after this shit. Like after this, I don't want to go there. Like this, I feel like if I get into it with somebody, we fighting afterwards. Like there's nothing else that we could do. We can talk about anything else. I don't consider that. I consider that us having a disagreement. And then Ryan was like, "Listen, y'all." Ryan was like, "Bianca, like I'm, like I'm. We got into it, but I'm, I'm like I don't. I'm not like that. I'm not the type of one. I'm not that emotional. I'm emotional, but I'm not. Hey, that I gotta emotional. let y'all know what she's talking about after that show. Like, I actually inboxed her apologizing because I'm one of those people to where a lot of people that I have a debate with or a slight argument, it's like, they like, oh, man, you know what? I ain't fuck with that nigga no more. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm inboxing like, look. He uh, thought it was over. I hey, stay on, the, stay, stay on the podcast, please. Don't leave. We need you over here. Listen, and I, I will tell anybody, and I, I, my, the people closest to me, especially friends who've been friends with me for years, they automatically know this. No matter who it is, there is nothing that you can can say instead of even if, there is not too much that I can have a debate about that's going to move me to the point that I'm pissed. Like I'm, I'm absolutely unless unless it's like a relationship and it's like got really, really bad. That's totally different. Mm. But there is no debate that I can have with somebody or conversation. I can have somebody where it can move me to the point that I'm like in tears or just absolutely fucked up over it. I'm just like, I'm just like, I'm done. I'm done. Like, cause I don't, I don't consider any. I hope you fucking die and walk out. <laughs> ah, tonight. <laughs> then, then, then leave. Sprinkle some salt on your table. Like, nigga, what you doing? Don't worry about it. You'll see. <laughs> like, like, 
No, there is to me, and and I'm not saying that because I'm tough. I'm just saying that just because that's just my personality. I joke too much. Like, I and I, if there's a funeral and you see me laughing, I'm not laughing for the funeral. I'm laughing because I, I joke all the time. It, it's just it's, that's just who I am. Yeah. But but I don't take anything too personal to where I'm like we can never fucking talk again mm. because I I'm okay with I'm at peace with what I feel and what I think. But I also respect somebody else's opinion. Mm-hmm. Even if it's totally different from mine, I respect the fact that you even fucking have an opinion. Mm-hmm. I do. I do. When when racist people don't say sorry, I mean, I dislike it. Mm-hmm. But I respect the fact that you're not apologizing. You're standing on what you believe. Because mm-hmm. stand on what you believe. Don't, don't backtrack. Don't say, no, I wasn't thinking like that. Or that's not what I was trying. No, you're trying to save face. That's mm-hmm. what you're trying to do. Stand on how you feel mm-hmm. and continue that. Be consistent. I got to respect your consistency too because you kept it up. That's just, hey, it is what it is. That's how you feel. Mm-hmm. So so when that happens, it's just, shit, it's just a, a difference in opinion. Mm-hmm. And nothing gets wrong with the difference in opinion. However, if you're going to have some standards, people, ladies and gents, <laughs> don't be talking about you want a woman who can cook and your motherfucking ass ain't buying groceries. Mm-hmm. Ladies. Ladies, don't talk about you want some niggas that's going to be good to your kids and you forgetting that this nigga got kids too. Are you encouraging him about his children? Are you asking about his children? Are you helping out with his children? Or are you saying he's your new kids? All right. <laughs> oh, yeah, I seen one. Oh, I seen it. Oh, that was a good one, too. So that's what I mean by, by I had some little sprinkles or some shit. You got a little rain I over there. I got a little there. something. I was like, <laughs> let me get my umbrella, nigga. <laughs> it's getting hot up in this bitch. Like, Red, all 623 posts, listen, comments. I, was, I had to get coffee because I knew it was going to take, <laughs> take I hope they'll minutes. delete this shit before I get to Starbucks. God <laughs> damn it. Oh, shit. <laughs> I just made a hot cup. Like, it was, it was pretty good. <laughs> Speaking of anger. I waited until the last. I didn't. I didn't want to come in. We came. We came in a little bit lighthearted. Want y'all to enjoy yourselves. Now we pissed. I. I got. I gotta say what. I was so. Certain things happen in this world with a, a news things that happen and, and occur, and it just really gets to me. It's like I be wanting to say something. Like I be wanting to just leave work and just go somewhere. I wish I had the of the power to just leave work and just go to to the local news station like okay all right, all right hit record nigga we about to go live i want to tell the world how i feel about this motherfucker but i don't have that power yet well, get back to the coke bottles <laughs> <laughs> nigga where you going you got six <laughs> you got 600 cases to put up motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> no nigga i'm going to fucking address the world about this bullshit <laughs> Uh, you know you leave up out of here. <laughs> you might as well not come back. <laughs> you know what? You, Fuck you. You better drive the Pepsi, nigga. Because you ain't going to be coming back in this bitch. <laughs> you one point away from walking, nigga. You better not leave. You got one point left. <laughs> Tell Facebook, motherfucker. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey. I'm done laughing with her. So on a it's serious, time to get mad. On a serious note, we pissed. Go ahead. Let's get it popping. These fucking Kroger killings. 51-year-old Gregory Bush. Trash. Decided that he wanted to fucking go and kill black people. Why? Because I guess he wanted to shoot somebody, but white people don't shoot white people, in his words. So he attempts to go into a black church. Which I'm so happy that they had security. About an hour, hour and a half prior, they had a service. And they say it was up to 100 people there. When he got there, there were significantly less, but the doors were still closed and they had security there. So he goes to a grocery store. Trash. Walks in. Shoots and kills 69-year-old, I don't say his name right, Maurice Stallard, Stallard, and on the way out, kills 67-year-old Vicky Lee in the parking lot. (laughs) 
I just fucking hate we live in a fucking world where pieces of shit are just fucking uh, living, breathing, existing, and just one day decide to go and end the person's life that you have no fucking clue as to who this person is. What gives a person a right to fucking... <laughs> I can't... What gives a person a right to take somebody's life that you don't even know? There's no beef. You didn't know these people. They had no prior history. You just walk in and say, I'm going to end his life. You're playing God now. And the first picture I saw of him, Bianca shared it. There were two deputies standing behind him. One of them had the look that I would have given him. But I would have went a step further. I would have fucking went. Hey, I'm one of those people. <laughs> I'm one of those people. I fucking have to admit it. If I get the chance. If I get the fucking chance to be close to a person that does something like this, some idiotic fucking actions that he took that ended two people's lives. If I got to do a year for bashing this mother, because I couldn't kill him. I don't think, I mean, he probably didn't have a gun. They were like flashlights or, or something like that. They were like deputies. They were inside. You can't carry weapons, but I probably would have just took my shot. And I think he deserved it. I am not the type of person who hates people. But this type of person I fucking despise. I would have fucking took my shot. Call me what you want. I'm sure no fucking jury on earth would have fucking convicted me. And I wouldn't even just rely on that. Even if I thought that there was automatic jail time, I'll take it. Because I, I would have to do it for my people. I would have to do it for those two people. There's no way in hell I could have let that slide. Absolute trash. Absolute fucking trash. First of all, he looks like he's trash. Okay, let me address one thing. Well, a couple of things. I made the post the following day. And, um... I read some of the comments from the stories too. And there were a lot of people, a lot of people talking about, that's why I always carry my strap. That's why I always carry my strap. Mm -hmm. First of all, first of all, let's be realistic. That is the worst shit you can say. Because basically what you're saying is shit that they was going to get it because they was empty handed. One of them did have a pistol. But when you are in the grocery store grabbing milk, orange juice, tacos for Taco Tuesday, anything, I'm not, my hand is not on my pistol when I'm grabbing milk or when I'm putting um, green onions in a bag. My hand is not on my pistol. Stop acting like that shit could not fucking happen to you because when you do, shit happens. It's, it's kind of like suggestion. Let's see. It. Life sometimes is like, let's see if how you would be in this situation. Stop doing that. This, this man and this woman were in the fucking grocery store, something that we do daily. You don't expect that someone's going to come up to you. Now, had he seen this person, that's totally different. But you don't expect somebody's going to come up to you and do some crazy fucking shit. It's like you picking up your kids from school or you, this is happening everywhere <laughs> in a grocery store. So stop saying what you would have done if you was the person that got killed because this person was just doing everyday shit, like going to the grocery store and getting groceries. Exactly. A an another thing. I'm wondering, and I don't know cause I didn't read any of the other reports, but I'm just wondering did anybody, when he was trying to get into church, did anybody call the police? And if they did call the police, did the police follow them? Because I know they said that it was people that were outside of the church that saw him pulling on the door. Mm -hmm. I read about that. Trying to get in. Did anybody like, I'm not trying to, you know what? I've been done some crazy things. Like I followed someone that I'm like, they're suspicious. Mm -hmm. Like, because they were, and they ended up shooting up a house that had kids in it. And I'm like, 
I knew that. Damn. Yeah, I seen it like right before my eyes, and I'm like, "What the fuck? Like this is this is madness. This is crazy." <laughs> it's it's just sometimes we see things and we don't say anything, and then. And then things that follow, you'd be like, well, what happens if I would have said something? Let's let's keep it real. Because people say, y'all need to stop snitching. Snitching is the definition of fucking snitching. The hood definition of fucking snitching. Because you motherfuckers act like you don't know. Snitching is if I'm in a situation with someone. Let's say we rob somebody. Or let's say we're selling dope. Or we're doing this. Or we're doing that. Mm-hmm. And my partner gets in. I don't think they heard that. Go ahead. And then, <laughs> I was researching the story and these pop-ups come up. Go ahead. The definition of snitching is if I am robbed or if I'm with the partner and we're robbing somebody or a bank or we're selling dope or we're doing this or we're doing this and my I get in trouble or I get caught, snitching is if I'm telling on my partner to ease up a situation for me, in a crime that I committed to. Exactly. That is what the fuck snitching is. If somebody shoots a fucking little girl in front of your face, you going to the police is not fucking snitching. That is not what that is. Snitching is beneficial for you. Snitching is lighting, lighting a situation. Like if, if some niggas are into it with your friend and you did the, and you did the same shit your friend did, but they come to you and you be like, Oh, that wasn't me. That was Marcus. That's what snitching is. Snitching means you were a part of it, but you told to get a lighter sentence or you told to not get your ass whooped. That's what snitching is. Snitching is not. If I see you fucking doing something, I have no business in it. This is none of mine, but I see you doing something and it's detrimental to other people. That is not fucking snitching. Words mean things, people. It's very important that you know this. Words mean things. So if I see somebody's fucking doing something, especially if it involves some kids, I don't give a fuck. Mm. And I don't give a fuck with who got a problem with it. Exactly. Because when people don't say anything, you know what? The people that it affects ends up doing some fucked up shit. And you could have stopped all of that. So, So one, let's get that right. But I'm just wondering, did anybody say something like, this motherfucker's crazy. Or did they just let him go off and like. All right. I just read that the reason he wasn't led into the church is because when he first got to the door, he immediately just started banging on it and pulling on the door. So they knew someone right. Like immediately from that. Now what they did, like uh, before the pop-up came up, I don't know if they called the police before he went to the store because he couldn't get into the church, but. They, yeah, they should have called the police because there's obviously something wrong. It's like somebody was in the parking lot, I guess. And luckily he didn't see them because like they say, it was a black church. So had he seen people in the parking lot, who knows what would have happened then. But I guess they just saw a man behaving erratically and, and it was like, Hey, don't let him in here. And then he went and I don't have the whole story straight, but. I think I read a part to where he was confronted by a white person there, and he said something about white people don't kill white people. Yeah, he muttered it. I think he, I, I think I read it that he muttered it afterwards. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not gonna kill you because whites don't kill white. Yeah, I think that's what that meant. But you know what? Which is fucking stupid. You know, because what? it does fucking happen, motherfucker. Just because there's not a term white on white crime, there needs to be. If we were going to use black on black crime, we will use white on white crime. And you motherfuckers that use black on black crime, but y'all don't say anything when it's a white person killing another white person, you are a part of the problem. If the media will not bring this to their attention, let's do it ourselves. Let's do it ourselves. We do everything else. We'll post twerk videos. We'll post videos talking to the money or eating on the money. Like, let's let's... Let's bring this shit back. I talk about white and white crime all the time, and I'm going to say it all the time. Period. It doesn't matter. In order for change, you got to start making some motherfuckers uncomfortable. And also making them uncomfortable, call the police on their ass like they do us. If I see you doing something fucking crazy, obviously, you motherfuckers aren't getting arrested for false for for falsely accusing somebody of doing some shit. Mm-hmm. Let me call the fucking police on you. Exactly. He's acting weird. I don't know what the fuck is going on. And use your best white person's voice. 
use your bad time, <laughs> so that way they'll come faster. Exactly. Because you do. It 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 is ridiculous that we don't do the same fucking shit in return. We don't do the same things in return. We don't we we keep our heads down or we just be like, you know, I'm gonna mind my business. And sometimes should you mind your business? Yeah. It, depending on the situation. But you wouldn't even have to really got into it. Just call somebody for help. This nigga's acting weird. Yeah, I agree with that. And another thing is when these fucking psychos go to fucking jail, don't put these motherfuckers in protective custody. Put these motherfuckers in general population. He fucking walked into a fucking grocery store and killed two parents, killed two grandparents. The male in the incident the male in the incident, Maurice Stellar, I will say his name again. His grandson was there with him. His grandson had to watch him die because of some piece of shit with a grudge. And that's the fucking most horrible thing in the world to me. Like, why in the fuck would you even do that? It's like, even for the most, um, God damn it, what can I, the, <laughs> even the worst person in the world should have some kind of heart. You see a man there with his kid and you shoot him down in cold blood. It's like, when I read stuff like that, I, it doesn't even seem real when you hear things about uh, crimes like that. Because who can fucking have the the <laughs> motherfuckers are getting bold. You are getting <laughs> bold to to just go and when this shit is crazy. And you know what? It's society's fault too because when you give people light ass sentences for doing certain shit. They don't do the shit because they feel like shit. I'm gonna get out, or I'm gonna get off, or I'm gonna get away with this shit, and then you end up looking crazy because you got all these people killing people. Like it's okay. Like the shit is okay. It's coming to the point to when it's like a catch twenty two. I'm damned if I do. I'm damned if I don't. If I defend myself, I'm fucking going to jail. If I don't defend myself, I'm fucking dying. Mm-hmm. I'm fucking dying. Which one can I do? <clears throat> can, are we talking about the synagogue? Because I. I have not read about that. I've read I have it. seen the headlines and certain mentions about it, but I have no idea what was going on with that. Pittsburgh, I've, I think it was. Yes. I've I've read enough. You know, it, it's just, and we'll get into more detail later, too, because it just happened and I just started reading up on it, too. But 11 dead. 11 dead. You walk in at 9 a.m., <laughs> with a, another with a, another AR and and luckily the children were not there not to say that that it's any less but you know when this kid is like it makes it 10 times worse for me it makes it 10 times worse it's it's just it's the fact of of people are getting bold people are doing whatever the fuck they want to do and and this person shot two police officers and the motherfucker still made it to prison alive. Y'all got us fucked up. Y'all got us fucked up. The only thing I can say is, I really fucking hope. I really fucking hope that there is some type of change that will come in this world soon. Because there's no fucking way that we should be doing this. It's like. Like, I know white people. I'm friends with white people. I am I work with white people. There's no difference other than skin color. You are no better than us. We are no better than you. To fucking think. First of all, you had no fucking control over being white. Over being black. To be arrogant about something that you have no control over is the dumbest shit in the world. If I could talk to a racist face to face... I will tell them you are the stupidest motherfucker on earth. If you're going to be arrogant about something, be arrogant about a situation that you created. Be arrogant about something that you built from the ground up. You had no, you were fucking pushed out of a pussy that happened to be of a certain race. That's all you did. You didn't do shit else. You're no better than anybody else. And if you fucking think that for one second, then you're the dumbest piece of shit on earth. Oh, you are. 
Because that makes no fucking sense. What the fuck do I look like being born black and say, you know what, I'm a king. You, all of you other motherfuckers are beneath me, and I will kill you. I will shoot you in front of your grandson. I will take you from your family while you're out on patrol or responding to a call just doing your job. I will walk in a mall and shoot you because you're darker than me. The dumbest shit in the world. I will never understand it. I don't think there's any explanation that will even remotely make me sympathetic to the way you feel because it's fucking stupid, man. <laughs> Pac, this is a, Pac said the best. We can't have peace till niggas get a peace too. Period. You know what? I'm I'm not I am definitely not one for violence. I'm not I'm not I'm not a violent person. Not at all. Like I like I said, believe in communication if we could talk about it. But when we stop being able to talk about it, like if it's if it's if it's mine or yours it's yours. It's yours. Regardless. I, and, and it's sad that it has to be that way, but people are getting comfortable with fucking killing us worse than before. Like they were cool before they would have been a little bit nervous. Now they're like, I don't really give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't really give a fuck whether I kill you or not. And are getting the most lightest sentences ever. Like I said, you killed two police officers and made it to the motherfucking police station. No, 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 no. My bad. You made it to the hospital. And then you made it to the police station. Yeah, they made sure you were okay. And, and you, then with the synagogue situation, you're targeting Jewish people. Yeah. Like, it's not just black people that are getting killed. You go in, and just because these people are different from you, they believe they have different beliefs, different upbringings, whatever the fuck you chose to say, okay, I have a grudge against them for this or whatever. What the fuck gives you the right to do that? Hey, I'll never understand that we could talk about this shit for a hundred years, but I will say this. <laughs> if you are if you're a person that feels like the people that you have to interact with in your little world, if you feel like they aren't on your level, if you feel like you're above them, you are just fucking like something is wrong with you mentally. It's like you don't have a problem with them. You have a problem with you. It's deeper inside of you. But I guess it would make you look weak if you acknowledge that. So you take the coward route and you choose to kill people. And I think that there should be harsher punishments. I think that if you go to jail, because if you're of a certain race, there's a higher percentage chance that you'll actually make it to a cell. Because any black person who walked into any white church and started shooting, you don't even have to hit a motherfucker. You're not going to make it home. You, you're you not going to make it to a jail cell. You're not. Nope. That's your last day on earth. That's it. That's it. And until other people see that there will be harsh penalties, those these type of tragedies will... St- continue to occur because they feel like, okay, hey, I'm not, in a fucked up way, they're not even throwing their lives away as bad as a black person would be. Because there's an actual shot that you get out of jail. Yeah. There's an actual shot that you get a life sentence. There's an actual shot that while you're in prison, it won't feel like prison. And you get out on bond. Oh, oh yeah, there'll be a bond for you. And you and you get that yeah you get that on bond and you still get to spend Thanksgiving and Christmas with your people. It it is just for people to act like they don't understand how the justice system is so absolutely fucked. It was never made for us. It's not going to be made for us. There there is. It's like everything else. We are too comfortable. We are we feel too safe. And and Trump becoming president, everything just happened for a reason. It is having us understand that oh you niggas were comfortable, huh? Oh, yeah. Like y'all, y'all got comfortable. Like everything that that our people worked hard for, from getting beat to marching to getting killed to to getting raped to getting everything. But we got comfortable because we start making a little bit of money. You comfortable, huh? You got the internet. You got all these great things. Like you mm-hmm. comfortable. And now when we start to see things, it's like oh, I can't believe that happened. It's been happening. Yeah, it's it never been stopped. happening. It's like we just gonna throw these little things down your throat so you can feel better about it. So you can ignore it, it, which we do. But now it's starting to become real because now it, it's anybody can be in the grocery store and that shit happen. 
Exactly. Anybody can be walking into a church or a place of pra- uh, praise and worship anywhere, no matter what you believe in. You could be walking anywhere. You could, hell, your kids could go to school in the church. And that shit can happen. So, so change comes when you stop feeling comfortable and you start feeling uncomfortable. Be uncomfortable, because you should be. Yeah, and one last thing. I really do think, like, there's no solution. I, I, all right, there's no way in hell I can sit here and give you a blueprint to follow, because I don't know it. But I do think that there needs to be some dialogue started, and there needs to be some actions taken, because... We are living in a world to where like we have no control over the things that happen. We have people walking this earth and their penalties aren't as stiff as ours, so they feel like they can um just take people's lives basically. All right, there's no way to eloquently put what I really want to say on this, so I'll end it right here, but I will say that racism needs to stop. No matter what race you are, you're not better than the next person. The person you kill, I really hope they haunt you for the rest of your fucking life. I really hope that you fucking die a horrible death. It sounds, people that hate make me hate. It's fucked up, but I really wish the worst for you. (laughs) I mean, I really do. All right, we ended on a somber note, but it needs to be said. We Trash.